Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on September 23rd, 2020 at 6 p.m. I'm sorry we're a little late starting. We had some technical difficulties. The location of the meeting is in the main meeting room in the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. The dial-in number is 312-626-6789. Nine nine or nine two nine two zero five six zero nine nine or U.S. toll free eight three three five four eight zero two seven six. Our meeting ID is nine one one six zero four one five eight zero. The passcode is 570012. These meetings are normally held remotely with the adequate alternative means of public access in accordance where required in accordance public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law MGL chapter 30A section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Access FCAT television. Remote meeting connections will be up on our screen, which I just read off. So I'm calling the meeting to order at 610. And our first scheduled um, appearance is with Barbara um, Hancock, our town clerk, hey, who is going to give us an update on the early voting for the November election. Thank you very much. Um, so quickly approaching, we're, we're barely recovered from September. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. So two things. Um, I think the layout in, in the early voting in person and the voting in person on election day went relatively smoothly. Yes. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to probably have about the same setup, maybe a little expanded, um, expecting more people. So I did write another um, plan. Yep. And what I wanted to talk to you tonight about is, um, first of all, I wanna <clears throat> let everyone know that the ballots are not here yet. Yep. Um, the Secretary of State expects to have them to us by October 9th, okay. or maybe somewhere in that week. So time. you won't get a ballot until the second week of October. Okay. Um, so we are, we are poised and ready, <laughs> yep. just waiting for the ballots. Um, um, you know what? I think, uh, Barbara, mm -hmm. just uh, maybe you could put on the website yep. that um, the latest information is that the yes. second week of October, yep. we will be mailing out ballots. Thank you for that segue. We did just today post an update oh. on the main <laughs> page <laughs> of the website with um, updated information on Thank how you. to you know, get a ballot, yep. when the ballots are coming, how to track your ballot, all of that stuff um, that some people took advantage of in September. Okay. Um, as well as um, on the main page, we updated our early voting hours. So for the November election, we're gonna have two weeks of early voting, including two full weekends. It's gonna start on a weekend, Saturday, October 17th. Yep. Um, and, and then the following day, uh, Sunday, uh, and both those days um, are gonna be from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, so you can come in okay. and vote in person um, Saturday and Sunday, the 17th and 18th from 10 to noon. Okay. Um, the following weekend, I'm just gonna cover the weekends first. Sure. Um, the following weekend, October 24th, Saturday, is the last day to register to vote. Okay. Those hours are locked in from two to four. Yep. So we're gonna have our early voting uh, in the afternoon uh, to offer an afternoon hours from two to four on that um, Saturday. Okay. And then Sunday we'll, we'll switch back to 10 to noon. Um, so 10 to noon, three of the, the weekend hours, three of the weekend days, the 24th, the last day to register to vote, two to four. And then so the 25th is uh, again, 10 to 12. Noon, yep. And now the two weeks in between those weekends, the 19th through the 23rd and the 26th to the 30th, the 30th being the last day for in-person early voting, 
will be throughout uh, nine to four, Monday through Friday, the whole okay. two weeks. Yep. Okay. So 14 full weeks of early voting. So that's a little different than September. We only had a week of it. Right. So, so we got two full weeks. So in that um, last, last time we had the one voting booth up there, which worked out great. Yeah. We're going to set up like that again, but we're also going to set two down here just in case it's that too much. Sense. Yeah. So um, we'll do the, t the one there, vote and, and exit, or we'll check them in, let them vote, come up there, check out and exit, one or the other. But we'll try and keep it contained over, over there. there. So. Yep. Okay. We'll put all the, uh, the whole rest of the building is going to be locked off. Um, no restrooms. The, it's just come in and vote and go. Yeah. Yep. So uh, that worked out pretty well last time, I think. Uh, what else do I want to tell you about that? Do, um, I saw a note on the 28th for a deadline to request an early Yeah, voting. that's the last day you can request an early voting mail-in ballot because, after all, we need to mail it to you. Absolutely. So um, yeah. to reasonably receive it in time to actually fill it out and get it back to us by Election Day. Yep, um, the 28th. So that is the cutoff. That's a state-designated cutoff. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. So the other um, big difference about this election is um, the state allowed um, with some strict provisions for us to pre-process all of these early ballots um, before election day. And what I mean by pre-process is we can open them and we can put them in a tabulator, but we can't tabulate. So we need to put them in the tabulator and lock it up. Yep. And we can't tabulate that tabulator any earlier than the other one, which is after eight o'clock on election day. Yeah. So. But they could be in and ready to go. I didn't take advantage of that in, in September just because yeah. primaries are difficult. But I think it's essential that we do it this time because the primary we had um, about 1250, 1200 X amount yep. of, of ballots. It took us the whole day right. to get them opened, checked in and put in the, in the ballot box. Right. So. I just think, um, you know, given the, the numbers, sometimes we get 80% turnout at a presidential election. If you get 74% of that mailing in, which is kind of what our percentage was yeah. for September, we'd have 2,500 ballots. We, we would never get it done. That's right. double the ballots that yeah. we had in, in September. Because so, you've got to go through, check the list. Yep. So what will happen, it has to happen while we're open. Yeah. And it can only happen the week before. Um, it starts on the 25th and it gotcha. has to end on the second. Yep. So during the early voting hours that week, I plan to bring in the same crew that worked at the September primary and set yep. up a table. It'll be in full view. Yep. They'll, they'll check people off, open the ballots, put them in the tabulator, and then they need to be locked away. Yep. So um, what mm -hmm. that'll do too is free up election day, which may be more crowded than the primary was, and there'll be just sure. less people and, and less going on. But yeah. we'll still be doing early voting ballots because anything that came in after, say, Friday or the last day that we did it, we'll, yeah. we'll have to do election day. So um, I just wanted to, to let people know that that is a little different process, certainly, from anything that we've done before. Yeah. Um, but it's no different really than the process that happens. It's just happening not necessarily on election day. Right. We're going to handle it the same way we do on election day. Yep. That sounds wonderful, Barbara. Yeah. I, I want you yeah. to know I really appreciate all the extra thought. Yeah, and the extra I think it'll work. help us stay organized. Yeah. Yeah, that you put into this to make sure it's so organized. Right, right. Yeah, trying. And then the setup for the main day, the third. Yep. You'll have your normal setup that you did last Last like time. I did in, last time, I think so. Back, right? I think we're going to skip the checkout line, which I yep. think I still have checkout, so you need to yeah. edit that. But yeah. um, no, that I, th I think that, that worked, worked a, a well, lot right? better just to keep the flow going. Right. And, yeah. I do too. I yep. do too. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, someone checked in. Where are they going to go? You know, right. They're, <laughs> they're right in this room, and then they go they're going to end the up door. leaving. Yeah. Can't go anywhere else. So. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, so applications. I think we touched upon it a little bit. You can. Um, we have applications in a box on top of the ballot, um, the drop box out in yep. the foyer. So if you want to apply for an early mail-in ballot, you can just fill it out, put it in the drop box, and we'll mail it right off to you. Great. Or there's links online yep. um, right on the main page and of our website. Be, and you'll mail them out sometime after the 9th or so of October. When as soon as we get them. them. Yep. 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 As soon as we get them, we yep. will mail them out. Um, Great. 
Okay, so no, the, again, the last day of voting is October 24th. Uh, yeah, in and person um, in is person October 30th. Yeah. yeah, October 30th is the last mm -hmm. day oh. of early voting. Right, but oh. the last day to register, register. Yes. Yeah. is to register. the 24th. If so. you're not already registered, if you're already registered, you don't need to do anything. Yeah. But if you're new to town or, or you haven't registered yet, um, you're maybe just right. of age or yeah. what, whatever. Yeah. Yes. So the last day is the 24th. Yep. Just to let people know that. Important. Yeah, yeah. To, to get, register. get registered and vote, yeah. please. Exactly. Um, for the next, uh, your next meeting, I would assume, um, I do have a handful of uh, new poll workers, <laughs> which Great. I'm putting to work. Okay. And I'll probably have the warrant ready. The oh, state good. hasn't sent it over yet, so yes. the warrant oh, okay. for the election. Yep. That'll be good. Yep. yep. Great. Yeah. Hopefully okay. well. that covers everything. We are, um, you guys are, are holding a special town meeting. We are. 22nd. Yep. On yep. um, October 22nd. Right. It'll so if anyone nice. wants to participate in that and they're not a voter, um, Friday, October 9th is the last day to register to vote to participate in that special town okay, meeting. Okay, great. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. That's good. Um, great. Any, anything else you need for help or do you, you feel like you've got... Yeah, I think um, September was a great, you know, good run through. Run. We set it up as though it was November so that yeah. we could kind of, you know, see how job. it all worked. And it, and yeah, it, it seemed And I good. think the public really appreciated it. And yeah. they, you know, they took advantage of that early right. voting and, and mail-in voting and it yeah. worked really, really well. Yeah. And um, yeah, this looks, yeah, looks good. Very good. So Very the, the, everything they receive in the mail is going to look just like the ballot situation that you got in September. Same yep. envelope, same same situation right i will say the ballot is two-sided okay um i wish i had one to show you but um i've only seen a you know a shot of it so it's a uh, it's long so it's a long first column and yep. then the second column is half okay. and then the third column's empty and half but you have to turn it over for the questions all right so oh that was the one thing i should ask is um is do we have anywhere or maybe it's online somewhere where we can just um, discuss or people can go to find out about the questions and just know mm -hmm. what's on there. I've heard a few ads on TV, right. but I don't really know Did everything you, that's on Didn't you get there. something in the mail? Yeah. I Most don't know. People, I'll check um, with my wife. Last um, week should have gotten a red booklet. Oh, maybe um, I did see and that. And that. yeah, that goes maybe. over, you know, if you vote yes, this is what happens. Oh, if good, If you vote good. no, that's what so happens. So people would have gotten that. Yeah. And I'm sure there's somewhere online they can see I that. think many people got it because inside is a voter registration card. And many people thought, do I have to fill this out? No. Oh, if you're okay. already registered to vote, it's just there if you're not In registered case. yet and yep. you need one. Oh, good. Yeah, so. Great. Okay. Uh, maybe we could put the link to the, it's probably on the Secretary of State's. Yeah. No Sarah, she's probably on and on there. Already so. got on there. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I was curious what, mm -hmm. the, what the questions were. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Great. Yep. Yep. So they'll be in the red book, and that's okay. the best way to kind of, uh, I think two of them are binding and two are not binding. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But I just want to um, tell people that there's the questions are on the back. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, thanks mm -hmm. for coming in tonight. Barbara, thank you for yeah. staying for our meeting. I really appreciate it. No problem. It. Yeah. Happy to. Any yeah. questions, anyone can just give us a call. Okay. 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 Thanks, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara. Thank Good you, evening. Barbara. Okay. Um, okay. Is there any uh, select board reports? Oh, boy, it has just been craziness, right? Busy, busy. Um, I don't have a ton to, I mean, I'm sure you'll probably talk about the EDS Stuff right. That been I was just on. gonna. Yeah. Um, I'll let you do talk about that. I I don't. I've been. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit later on. But I've, we've been working with the planning board on the marijuana bylaws that we'll talk about coming up. Um, been doing that. Uh, just a, a, an update on the sewer that um, we got final request for final payment that the clarifier is complete. Um, oh, they did. Uh, Waterline did an amazing job. Um, really good. Um, one one change order for less money, so that was good. I could mention that before, but um, and I've been talking with our engineer Dave Prickett about um, phase two, and so what I'm really trying to get is a meeting together with um, USDA. Uh, there's a new uh, woman in charge of that whole process. Our, our last woman is gone, and so there's a new one in charge. So, um, but she's been in communication with Casey and. What I wanted to do was get a meeting together just to talk about, you know, that we do already have um, 
you know, uh, financing. We got early financing for the, you know, paying for the engineering stuff. We want to make sure they're aware of all of that and what we're doing there. Um, Dave is working on a meeting for, in the, well, we're at the end of the month, probably the beginning of October, to get together with all of us, um, post a meeting, and I'd like to have a couple hour session, three hour session maybe, of, you know, going over those plans, inviting in, you know, Julie Chalfont and, and you know, Skip and just kind of everybody get their head around where we're at on the plans, what we're, you know, what we're committing to, and then, because by the end of the year, we'll have the, um, hopefully all the documents out to bid. So we start bidding for that first phase. And then I also want to start thinking about phase two, uh, because we want to get that ready for funding if there's something available. Um, and, you know, I just want to keep rolling on this stuff to get it, to get it going. And then, um, and then start talking about Old Deerfield, because that's still in a, in a world of hurt up there, too. Um, I think, I know we've been meeting in the past. We've been meeting at the sewer treatment plant. Yep. I think we really need to meet here. Absolutely. Absolutely. More space. Much, yeah, we'll all spread, you know, put a table all out. Yeah, Everybody we spread out. Yeah, put a table over there. Yep. I think we can all we can, get together. We can, we can sit here, and then we can have, like, Dave yep. Cricket Yep, and we'll here. have the machines then, up. Yeah, and uh, Julie and yes. Skip yep. and Keith. Right, you know, spread there. out. Everybody spread out. Absolutely. There's enough room here. It should be safe. Yeah, and no, I the other place is Just too want small. to mention that yeah. um, Vern Harrington. Um, that was so nice. Had made these dividers for yep. us, and um, so it's lovely. Yeah, it really is. Yep. So, you know, Very one good. more safety item. Yep. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is probably not going to make me very popular. <laughs> um, I have some serious concerns and what the Dollar General is costing the town in legal fees. Yeah. And we've got to press to our boards that we have to do things legally and not by popular opinion. Mm -hmm. Because if we make the wrong opinions, and this goes to court, this could cost us a lot of money and actually actually put us into a t uh, two and a half override situation mm -hmm. because our budgets are so tight. So, you know, it's just a concern of mine. Uh, you know, there's a lot of rhetoric out there. Unfortunately, none of it's legal. Uh, and, you know, the ZBA has got to do what they have to do. Of course. They're in an appointed position. They're not an elected position. So they got to get the politics out of it and just do what's right. Mm -hmm. The planning board is an elected position. They yeah. function differently. Uh, but we've got to make sure that we are doing it correctly and not opening the town to a lot of liability. Because, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'd love to see a cap on how much our legal expenses are on this. So it's not an open checkbook all the time. No, I know, Dave. But honestly, I feel like it's not fair to the ZBA and anyone that volunteers not to have legal counsel hmm. there. With well, and, and here again, I, I want them to have counsel. Yeah. It's just that it's just, you know, I'm just afraid that, you know, Adam is there for our legal counsel, and they've got to make sure they're listening to him and understanding oh, yes. what he's saying. Yes, I agree with that. Yep. Uh, so agree. it doesn't put us in to heavy litigation somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know. There are the reasons. And, you know, here again, yeah. I don't want Dollar General. Well, I, you know, I in, trust in that sense. they'll do what they'll it, personally, do. Personally, the right you know, thing. it's just not the type. I do love the, the design they have for the building and everything that they've presented. Because it basically looks like a flip flop of Yankee Candle on the other end of town, but you know there's, you know, well, there's well, I trusted our, you know, our zoning budgetary board wise, there's the things that we have to look at and understand and make sure that we're not causing greater harm to the town than what we can sustain. Right. Um, and it's, you know, here again, it's just you know budgetary wise, you know. We're fine this year, but the next couple of years we're screwed right now because Congress is not putting anything into state and municipal mm -hmm. right now. Mitch McConnell says, you know, we don't need it. Let us file bankruptcy, which is crap. Well, let's 
one thing at a time. I know. Let's help people get out and vote. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I trust our boards to do the right thing, and I hope they, you know, I just encourage everyone to listen to our council. Adam is wonderful, does a great job representing the town and, and, our, and our interests, and, um, and I'm, I'm sure they'll come to a good decision, whatever it may be. I'm not weighing either way on this issue, but I just want to make sure, like Dave said, that they're following the laws and do, making the right decisions um, that, that, are, that are, you know, based on what council is saying, that they have the opportunity to make those decisions. So that's all. All right. I, I just I just wanted to make sure that they know that we support them. Support them, and that mm -hmm. we are supporting Adam being there. We just that hopefully people will listen to him. Yeah, and it's just you know it's you know there's a reason we're hiring the council. Right. Well, right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um, and I wouldn't feel comfortable in a number of things that we're doing right now not to have council, council there. You know. Kate's involved in one thing. We've got Adam in another good. thing. We've got Lisa in some things. You know, there's a uh, lot of. We have a lot of legal expenses. You I think know, the, the and you know, I, you know, I think you know, on the warrant, we should put an article to increase the amount of what our legal expenses I know. are this I think year. We, and I, and we should do that, and I do think we should really explain to the to the public what you know, what our legal counsel does for us. You know, how much it does cost and what we have them do because it, it, it is a big ticket and, and people don't really understand the role of, of council and why we use them. So I think it is worth educating the people and talking about why, you know, why we may increase the line this year because of all the things that we're going through in town. You know, all the different projects we're working on. I mean, even just the sewer stuff and all the contracts we do that they overlook for us. I mean, yep. there's, a, there's a lot of day to day stuff. Even the marijuana bylaw we're changing over that's there's constant work. Um, and you know we have a prime example of not having the legal counsel in the right place at the right time, when you know we've gone to superior court and lost. Mm -hmm. Right. And if we had legal counsel there, it wouldn't have happened. Right. Yep. So. I, know. I agree with you, Dave. Thank you for bringing that up. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else you want to guys want to talk about? Okay. Nope. nope. Moving on to board of health. Um, I'll just do the mosquitoes real quick because yeah. it's real positive. This is the it tail is end of Triple E um, transmission. Uh, again, we skated through another week. There's no West Nile disease here yeah. in Deerfield um, for the first time in eight years. It's, a, it's really great. Um, yep. The highway department, again, I just want to um, yeah. compliment them on getting right out there. Every time we did have rain, of course, it's been very dry right yeah. now. But West Nile, the mosquitoes can carry West Nile right up until killing frost. Yeah. So please be careful in the evening, yet. you know, as it gets darker earlier. We've People had are still out, you know, with soccer. Is it, you know, some of the kids are staying playing soccer. Please make sure that they um, are protected. And we've had some frost, but they haven't been to kill frost No, it's not yet. killing frost. Just Just mosquitoes bit. are still out. Yep. You no, know, my peppers are still happy, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I was, I'm, actually didn't have a frost either myself. Yeah. Um, uh, also, we had, uh, it's been very quiet. Fortunately, from a COVID point of view, um, yep. we had Darius on our um, EDS call this morning, our emergency dispensing site call. He always gives us an update. Yep. And um, school is, is opening up slowly uh, this week mm -hmm. um, with in-person students. And uh, it's going to phase in with cohorts, um, half of the cohort going in. Um, and then the sec uh, October 5th, everybody will be there. Yeah. Um, in, in the normal schedule. So it seems to be going very well. And I, I encourage just to tail on to that. I, I, you know, fingers are crossed that everything works well. Our, our cases we have not seen yet. And I'm very pleased that as a lot of students came into the area to a, a lot of the private schools, we have not seen any cases there No, there have been either. zero so cases at both at Northfield. Cement, DA, yeah. you know, all yeah. these. Um, zero cases. We've been very lucky in, in, the, in Franklin County for that. And there are, you know, I don't know if you saw, but there was a letter uh, out from the um, Secretary of Education. Yes, yes. You know, I was really just sternly mention that. mentioning that these, the, the towns like ours should be back full time. Um, uh, I know. So and, and we're not pressure. in that list of, you know, getting our hands slapped because we are starting the hybrid. Uh, but I think they're going to, you know, at some point fairly soon, if, if things stay positive, they're going to want to see more and more. And I hope, I hope the administration is working towards that too. Yeah. 
Well, we'll see what happens. Yep. Um, anyway, uh, their new guidelines came out for DPH, um, but it was related to the restaurants. Now you can have tables of 10 instead of tables of six. Okay. Uh, it, you can now bars can be open, but it's only for food. It's not for drinking. Um, the CDC did come out with Halloween guidance, um, some guidance and uh, DPH had promised us last week they were going to come out. So I'm hoping that Friday's call, conference call on Friday, we'll have some Halloween um, guidance. That would be helpful. But um, in general, we'll probably not make any decisions until mid-October, okay. just um, because of Kate, see what our cases are. And, yeah. and we need to have people understand that it's not that we don't want Halloween, but everybody has been very safe yeah. and, and kids have been really responsible. People have been responsible. Again, what worked in 1918, wearing masks is working in 2020. It is. And um, socially distancing and giving up some of the really fun things um, is, is making us safe. So um, we, we seem- and What do you think that- We seem to um, able to have gone beyond um, the the Labor Day blip with no blip, mm -hmm. which, is, which is pretty exciting. So um, anyway, this is what we're doing. Um, I just want to say we had our just-in-time training last night yep. for our emergency dispensing drills. Uh, we went over what was going to be for the September 30th um, senior flu clinic out here. We have our high doses and we have uh, Pre-registration of about a hundred, which is perf perfectly good. Um, then we're um, Kevin. Mute your phone. Mute your phone. Mute your phone. Oh. <laughs> you might want to move. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, can you mute your phone? Um, and then, um, so and then we're having the October fourth at the Highway Garage, and we really appreciate people coming. We just want you to be patient. It's going to be two lanes with some expansion to a third lane, but this is a smaller, tighter um, location than the Yankee Candle. Um, we're doing this because if we get COVID vaccine in the winter time, we need a place that's undercover and that we can heat. Yeah. If it looks like we're not gonna get vaccine until the spring or summer, we'll be moving back over to the Yankee Candle um, corporate office parking lot, um, as long as they allow us to um, do it there. But we're practicing for a winter delivery. So please be patient. It's a little bit tight, like I said, and it'll be a little bit slower because we can't, we won't have four lines. We're only going to have two, potentially three. I just wanted to thank the volunteers and you'll probably get to that too, but I was so, um, so um, happy to see uh, all the nurses and even um, just everyday people willing to sign up and um, get trained and to, you know, be a part of this response yeah. team, you know, for the flu clinics and also being ready for when a vaccine comes out for COVID or any COVID response team. So um, it's just so nice to see our community pull together and, and help where they can and all the, you know, retired nurses and, and nurses taking time off to come in and help and administer and, um, and, and really thank Lisa and, and I want to thank Carolyn has been just a hero. I mean, I know you shake it off, but Carolyn has been a hero through this whole COVID <laughs> process. Um, I just want to say for all the work that she has put in to every day pulling all of our four communities together and, and Franklin County together, all the nurses, all the volunteers staying up on top of this stuff. Uh, homeland security meetings i mean it's constant meetings all day long and i i just we are so lucky to have carolyn leading us in this um well, in right. this pandemic yeah. just truly it really and we did take lot. take a straw vote and we did decide that if you individually wrapped the cinnamon buns yes you could probably <laughs> yes you could make that happen we did yes, yes. <laughs> there is a possibility i know i'm i'm actually really sad that we didn't You're have our, sad. Did our just, <laughs> just in time training didn't happen. I mean, it is really social, and then our EDSs are very social, and it's a real community event. It is. These stupid masks and, you know, yeah. having to socially distance is it's very difficult. It and, is. And for me, it's 
you know, yeah. that's your satisfaction is working with the community. It is. So it really is for all it the is, hard work. It is a lot everybody. less. But we're going to have sticky bun parties. Yeah, after. so this is over. It'll <laughs> yeah, be sticky bun I mean, party. I've been cut out of the sticky bun business, <laughs> let me tell you. So we will have some snack, but I'm yeah. afraid it will be just, yeah. you know, store yeah. stuff. Um, anyway, um, pre wrapped, sanitized, and sitting mm -hmm. by itself for mm -hmm. at least 48 hours. Sad so. little cold yeah. sticky bun. <laughs> yeah, no, no <laughs> sticky bun. Anyway, thank you both. Um, I think we have we have Kevin on the line since we just yelled at him to mute his phone. <laughs> so um, instead of um, just we'll we'll jump down to the ADA because um, I'm assuming Kevin you're on the line for the ADA plan or were you here for something else? I think he was here for uh, we have a um, revised assistant superintendent highway job description for approval that was unanticipated. Oh, okay, Kevin, are you here for that uh, for that one? That is correct. Okay, let's let's jump down to the um, superintendent, assistant superintendent um, job description that was, was modified at the yep. personnel committee, and then um, we'll just talk about the ADA thing because for years you've been our ADA coordinator. So we'll just jump up to that, so that <laughs> then you can go home. Um, um, I mean, okay. you could turn us off. I mean, I'm assuming you are at home, but you can turn us off. Kevin. <laughs> okay, so um, what, um, Casey and Kevin, you were both at that meeting. Do you want to go over the um, change? Casey, have you got it in front of you because you were so the one doing I, the describing? Yeah, I, I yes, also I have do. it. Yeah, a couple that were there. Yes, um, I do. I, okay. Okay, good. So. There were a couple of things that were changed mm -hmm. um, during the personnel board's meeting. And I actually sent you the red line version. Yep, I can see that. Um, I, I didn't get the, uh, I, it's I got It's in the very back of the packet. Oh, okay. Very back, all the way in the I'm, I'm really the very end of the packet. Very, very end. Okay, because I. The last um, couple, sheets. last two pages. Okay, because I did not. Uh, so really it was just the adding for blueprints you know proficient in blueprint reading and to emphasize right. technology proficiency and yeah and then and something so we emphasized oh, a couple is. of yeah. things it's basically things that were technologically yeah um important and proficiency with technological drawing yep. with the use of technology keeping electronic logs the skills around technology such as being able to use software programs and stuff all of these things are more and more dependent on, especially now, we're dependent on Zoom, for goodness sake. Um, so we, need, we felt in the, I shouldn't say we, as we discussed it with the personnel board, we realized we needed to identify some more of those things. Great. So anywhere you see a comment with an explanation is what yep. I did. That's so, perfect. And it was through that conversation. There was also a couple consistency um things that we fix cd like, putting cdl in two places right referred to that way yep oh i'm fine with this looks good casey i'm fine yep with this. looks really good kevin you're okay. fine are you fine with this yeah no and actually <clears throat> i'd really like to thank the uh personnel committee because i'll be honest with you you know we you know K casey spent a ton of time on this you know and and i looked at it a boat boatload and you know <clears throat> they picked up on some very simple things that I feel bad for because I missed, you know, yeah. and there were, there were simple things. I should have picked up on it and I didn't, no, it's fine. Um, but they did a fantastic job, extremely supportive. Um, yeah, I'm very appreciative of them. That's great. That's Good. great. That's, yeah, that's what we need. Good. Um, so do we need to vote this, re-vote this? Yes, okay. I would. It would be helpful. So okay. I, I'll make a motion to approve the town of Deerfield job description for assistant superintendent for the highway department. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you, Casey. And thank you, personnel. Hey, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, thank you, yes. Thank the, you. Uh, yes, sir. We'd only lose six parking spots in town, not 13. What's that? I'm sorry, what? The, uh, the thing I was talking to you about before, 
it only involved losing six parking spots. Oh, okay. Uh, I, oh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So we'll talk about it later. Okay. Um, very good. Thank you. Um, okay. ADA, so. uh, let's let's jump to the ADA plan. Um, I looked at this. It, it seems like it's phased in slow enough. Kevin, it is. did you feel? Are you comfortable with it being phased in the way it is? I just yeah, I, I believe we'd be able to do it, but the problem we need to keep in mind is is, is not everything is going to be funded through any type of grant. Right. Right. So, that's, that's what I was worried but, but about. But the thing is, is, is if, we, if we go ahead and, and adopt what our um, self-analysis is, then at least this way, um, like Casey said, you know, if, if something happens and there's a complaint, we've already got it on record with the state that, hey, listen, this is our plan. We don't have a gazillion dollars. This is how we're going to try and do it. And, but we have to stick with it and it's gonna to have to be funded and it's not gonna be cheap. Yeah. But it needs to be done, right? I mean, we just gotta right. start ticking this stuff off when we can. Yeah, but it's phased in enough and I think we have yep. enough flexibility that we don't have to worry. I mean, the next two years are gonna be really tough. Yep. And, and we do wanna keep moving on this, but mm -hmm. I, I think we can, do some stuff that's not that expensive and then some of the more expensive stuff can be done you know when we get a little bit more financially better yep were you well you know a lot of this stuff a, a lot of it can really be um dialed in with um complete street yep yep so so i mean so that that's a huge funding source but you know, oh. I mean, she's up against the wall all the time right now. She's got no time to do it, and I have no time to look into it. Okay. You know, um, I it, also it, 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 there's there's a money source, but it's being able to take the time to put everything together. Yeah, I know, like a place on the cake. You know, they're getting two million dollars, but they've also been working on it for 14 years. Right. I would also like to know about how you know. I, I was wondering how our town buildings this advisory committee is coming along too, because. I've been kind of waiting with bated breath to read that study and figure out, you know, how, because we studied some of these older buildings, you know, how does this affect, you know, are there any things pointed out in that that need to be addressed? I'm sure there's tons, uh, but well, we're gonna I'm just be, very we're anxious missing, to see that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, Bruce Hunter. I know, it's such a loss. Bruce, yeah, such a Bruce loss Hunter to the passing, town. He was helping us with that. and. So, and then yeah. we've been distracted by COVID. So. I know. We just need to pick that back up and yeah. see where we're at and um, see how stuff. it ties in. So, um, Casey, do you want us to a, a vote to adopt this plan as as is, right? So both of you feel yes, okay? Yes, that would be useful. Yep. And my comment is similar to what Kevin's is, is. We start to phase it in. Some things, whether it's outside or in th inside, some things could be phased in maybe as budgetary considerations while we start to build a capital plan because really some of the larger things particularly in the buildings we should start planning for 2024 mm -hmm. so you start stocking exactly. away tiny bits of money yep yep okay just like we do with the fire department take a little bit a little bit a little bit you know that's how we took care of the roof that's how we're taking care of the parking lot i mean it's, it's the way to do it you know you, you got to put away a little money yep okay um, I'll take a motion to approve it. I'll make a motion to approve the. Um, I guess adopt it. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, to Perfect. adopt. Let me just go back a second. Where did it go? Uh, sorry, I started reading it. <laughs> um, I make a motion to approve the ADA self-evaluation transition plan for the town of Deerfield uh, from August 2020, prepared by the Franklin County Council of Governments. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Um, thank you, Kevin. Is there anything else you wanted to bring up? I noticed that um, you did a wonderful job on Upper Road from um, Old Albany to the Greenfield Line. And you said tomorrow you were gonna start on Lower Road. Correct, yeah. Uh, tomorrow we're starting on Lower Road. We're going to be doing the northbound side, but we're going to be going against traffic. As, as it, so 
it's going to be very similar one-way traffic expect delays if you can avoid the area that would be the best thing to possibly do it's basically going to be a four-day project um i can get two miles a day it's just about four miles of length of road that we're taking care of so by friday i should be at the twin bridges that's where we turn around then we head back north again um, but because we have some thin pavement through there i have to take some of the milling and throw it back into it to be able to increase our our amount of density of product in there um and then it's gonna be another two days heading north after that then we bring in warner brothers and they're going to do a one inch overlay from the greenfield line all the way to uh, upper road at the uh the bridge so that will be complete and won't have to touch that minimum seven to ten years if it starts to fail a little bit then just do a rubber stone over the top of it um and that'll give you another 10 years on top of it we're going to this the process is is kind of lengthy and how it's done but it, it's it's very interesting and in how it's working you know so it, you know it's not a test case by any means because they've been doing it for over 20 years it's just not very many people out Western Mass have done it. So long story short is we took care of that. We took care of one of the culverts with, with Cocot on Lower Road. That was completed today. Came out fantastic. They did a great job for us. Oh, wonderful. Um, we, we collectively, the highway department, um, we, we thought we had somebody lined up to go ahead and do the job for us on across from Atlas Farm. Um, that fell through. They got, they got too busy where they were at. Um, completely understood you know they dropped the phone call and said hey we can't do this and i'm like oh we got to so um our crew these guys jump through hoops that you know at six o'clock in the morning say this guy ain't doing it we are um so then they went ahead and, and jumped through the hoops and got everything done and today they finished it off and it looks great so, wonderful uh, yeah so we we've, we've we've got a lot of stuff done in a short amount of time oh kevin that's wonderful casey did you have something to you wanted to say I did before Kevin goes away. So one thing that I think the select board needs to weigh in on um, is we should consider the pay range to hire this assistant superintendent. And Kevin and I talked about it earlier. And right now the position is classified as a grade five. Um, so we thought perhaps start, we're, we're not sure, we're pretty sure that nobody's going to start at step one. Right. Guaranteed, nobody. No. For if looking at the the responsibilities, nobody will touch that for less than a step five. Right. So that's what we were talking about before you came in, uh, Carolyn. Was creating a, a range to publish in the notification of the position opening. So we suggested step five to step nine, which calculated annually would be sixty three thousand fifty seven dollars to $74,541. And I wanted the board to consider that because before I can put the notice out, the range has to, you guys have to understand what's in the range. Once we get to a pay rate, then we're in a different position. But the range gives people an idea of what they could expect to be paid. Um, and, and would that be, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just wondering how, what the personnel committee said on this. Because normally they, they I forgot to ask them. It's they 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 tend to vote on the actual pay rate. The range is how you advertise. Okay. And so I didn't explain that to them because it it literally I was just trying to get through that because I had another meeting right after that. So I honestly didn't think about it. But it, once we get to a pay rate that's agreed upon, then we can ask them that question. Yeah. Although yeah, I'm going to write them in. Think about that a little bit too. Um, I mean, I'm just thinking about what we're going to, what we're expecting and what we want this person to do. Um, you know, it'll be helpful when we do that compensation plan. I'm just curious, uh, looking broadly around the, around our region, what, you know, what are the rates? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, what range we want to be in. And I'd have to think about that a little bit. I didn't, uh, wasn't prepared to say that right I now. Can't, I can't advertise until we have a range. I hear that. Because I won't send out an advertisement that doesn't tell people I hear what you. they can expect. I just, I just today, I don't think I can give that to you right now. But. Um, Kevin, no, what's your feeling on that range? We can, we'll, just, we'll just back burner, no big deal. 
No harm, no foul. I think just for, um, we'll I mean, if you gave me a week. You really have to feel comfortable with what you're doing. Right. You know? yeah. so, I don't want to think hard about that. Why don't, because why don't we, um, we do for every can job. Can we um, let you know individually, Casey? I, I don't want to no, wait. You need to take a vote. Yeah, yeah. we can you take, need a to vote. take a vote. So if you're not comfortable, the next time we can address it would be the 7th. Oh, that's fine. I'm just trying that's to get far. this ready so that we can start advertising. Yeah. Kevin, what do you think about the range? You think you're going to get candidates with the range that we're talking about? We can't find anybody. I would think so, but like I said, if you start if you started anything less than a than a five, um, no. I mean, yeah, you're not going to get anybody. I'll be honest with you. You know, again, this was the recommendation from the personnel committee was looking more of uh, for a poor choice of words, a national, um, uh, a wider range. Search. Yeah, oh, yeah. Why uh, a national search? So that way it opens up. She goes because there's a lot of people in a lot of different areas. Yeah, that you know they're, they they want to move and they want to move to our beautiful sense, town. You know? So I'm like, well, you know, I I understand where she's coming from, and and realistically, you know, the How pool that is local is is slim to none. Yeah. Um. What um. What was uh, what was Mike making when he left? Or what's that position? I mean, what pay? position? Uh, 20, uh, 28, 35, maybe? No, I'll check. Hold on. I can tell you in a minute. Uh, if we're anyway, not, regardless, we can take it up on the 7th. Yeah. We can take it up on the 7th because it sounds like Trevor wants to see yep. a breakdown. The problem is, is a breakdown. There's various places I can find you a breakdown of where people are paid. You're, the COG puts out the salary survey every right. year. Right, I know, I've got that. You can see what's local. I just wasn't expecting but to But the issue is, is if we tonight. go outside local, then we go outside that expectation of what a local person could expect right. to do for this, for this job, right. which is a different job than it what is. Michael. It is, much Phillips different. Did. Right, and that's what I'm, Mike was there for a while, so I'm just wondering what the difference, this difference is from what, when he left. Because he, you know, he was there for years and years and years. Oh yeah, he was there for 30, 30 some odd years. So when he started, he was probably making like six bucks an hour. Right, yeah, right. probably. Yeah, that. Absolutely. You know, I mean, because so, literally it was it was thirty, what thirty four years, I believe. Yeah, yeah, thirty four years. years. I, I, so I feel bad. 30, I don't remember, but yeah, thirty four. It was it was thirty something. So it's it's a boatload of years. So when he started, it was very very slim, yeah, and but, I want to say it was twenty eight something when was his last pay. So I, I his pay rate may have been that, but his annual wage was sixty thousand two seventeen ninety two. So is that so, plus overtime. Plus overtime. Well no, plus, not, plus over. uh yeah but we're not so is this person would this not would be have a salary overtime. right his salary. That right. Correct. This that person correct. is exempt and that's so the other thing that needs little. to be taken into account. Is so this we're, position is exempt in the same manner that Jennifer is exempt. Right. right. Sorry, so, Jen. No. Um, so we're not um, actually. We have we have budgeted money then for this in this range. But we have we may have money. We're not sure. Um, Kevin's got to search that for me. But this is not in the classification plan. So this has to be added to the classification plan. Right. It's a whole and new job. And that's the next thing that we do is we add it. And if you look in your your special town meeting warrant really rough draft you'll see a note oh good to revise the classification plan to add this position as a grade five i, I, I think i think you're i think you were concerned and, and my concern was like what was it going to do to the budget because we shouldn't be increasing the budget we need to be conservative but if if oh, well we, it's going to increase the budget i can almost guarantee you that yeah it but will we, but we do yeah but if you're, you're hiring Position. Yeah, but we budgeted to pay Mike, which is 60 something, and then we were paying him overtime, which this person wouldn't be eligible. So we're in the ballpark, I guess, is what I'm saying. So uh, it's a problem. The only problem <laughs> is that, um, you know, potentially this person, if he stays for a long time, would be incrementally going up as well. So, oh. That's why I just wanted a week to look at that a little bit and think yeah. about that. I mean, I know we want to get this out there and advertise, but... Well, we want to get it out there, Kevin. But, but I, I understand. If you need time to think about what this is going to look like, then if you have specific questions, we can try to answer those yeah. questions. Yep. Um, I'm okay with that, but I'm just trying to do... I'm, I'm trying to get the ducks in a row so that yeah. when we 
hit go on this. Every yeah, we're all set. Point. No, I agree with that. I just. Well, yeah. my problem is if we, if we wait two weeks, it's October 7th. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, no, wait two weeks anyway. Right. Just, I, I've already got plan eight put together for snow, so. I was just yeah, going to say. Unless you have I'm, a meeting in between. I'm really worried about snow Yeah, we season. can have a meeting in between, too. Um, you know, we're... This is 2020. We're not going to get any snow. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> yep. I'm going to hold you that, David. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Trevor, are you going to be around at all on the 30th? Yes, I you, think so. Do you know what your calendar is? Because Dave and I were going to be here for the to work the clinic. Maybe we can schedule, a, like, a five-minute meeting. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I've got, um, I don't know what it said, Deerfield School Committee. I know I don't have a school committee meeting, but yeah, I, I, I can do that. All right. Casey, can you um, schedule um, um, a meeting after the senior clinic? What time's that meeting over? That's 10 to 12. Is, is oh. that a bad time? Uh, hmm. what, can you do it earlier? Um, or can you do it later? Yeah, yeah I can like do it. 3 34. Yeah, o'clock? yeah, that would work. Uh, is it hard for you? Well, it's just, you know, I'm going to be there at probably 8 o'clock in the morning. It's all right. I'll, I'll, I can come back. I'm just trying to, yeah, fit in to work. It's been so Well, well then we don't have to do it on the 30th. We could do it, you know, whenever. We should try to do it next week, though. Yeah, no, I agree with I, that. I, don't, I, I just no, don't feel comfortable waiting two, two full weeks. That's all. Right. We have to make a decision. Yeah, and I just wanted to, th I just wanted yeah. to think a little bit, look at some, you know, comparisons and, oh, th I, uh, you know, just do a fine. fast. I'll way. be able to forward you guys some information, too. So oh, thank that you. That way you can thank see you. where we're at. You know, I can, I can look at what Mike has had historically over the past couple of years for overtime. Um, specifically, you know, look at his numbers, because Brenda and I actually started on it tonight. We're, we're I'm, I, so I'll, get, I'll get with Casey and work forward. out a time that works for you yeah. guys. Okay. We'll plan on the 30th. I just, I'll get with you, Casey, and, and find a time I'm, that works I'm, for everybody. I, I feel like I if, if you out. look at historically the overtime, and then you look at what we've, you know, the, his salary, and then overtime, I yeah. think the money is there. I right. just don't want to add myself. I don't want to add anything extra than what's already more or less there. I, I just right, but we are important. doing. Um, we are doing a completely different position. Yes. And we're looking yeah. for and something completely you different. You change the model and reduce the person, either. but that per the person that you hire is much more, you're asking much more from that person. Right. Right. And so, so uh, but I, I hear you. Yeah. I, I know what you're saying. So as, we'll, long as, as long as it's, I, not, I, it's more or less neutral on the budget. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I understood. But I, I, I will tell you one thing, though, is, is I will wait. I will struggle before I will hire a substandard person. Right. Thank oh, you. Kevin, I agree yeah. with you, but I don't Me want too. you to struggle. I know you're stressed out a lot. But you know what? I, I would rather struggle because otherwise, because it'll be worse for, otherwise. Or a, cho a choice of putting it. Once you get them, you own them. He yeah. or she. Yeah. Um, and then this this is going to be for the you know I'm looking out. I'm trying to look out for the best interest of the town. Yep. Um, yep. For the simple fact is, is you know, if you've got somebody that, that, yeah, okay, but you know, I'm assuming that when I plan on retiring, hopefully in about five years, I want somebody hopefully stellar. this person will be to the point that they'll be able to step right in, and it'll be seamless, and you won't even know that I'm gone. Um, you know, that that I is really that. my my goal to to I, I make sure that, that the town is taken care of. We will always miss you. There's no Kevin, doubt about we that. We will miss you. You're, you're a good good soul. Um, Okay. You're so No, that, that sounds good. So I'll get with Casey on the 30th, and um, we'll, we'll find a time that works. Yeah. And, and I'll get you information. So that okay. way, you know, you can, you can make an uh, uh, informed decision. That'd be great. Thank you. No, no, no problem. All right. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's go back. Let's make sure we get the SCEMS request. Yep. Um, this is from Zach. So, um, I'm sorry. Oh. So am I good? Oh, yeah, oh, you're all yes, set, Kevin. Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Have for a attending. Really nice night. Yep. See okay. You. All right. Thank you. Appreciate yep. it. Yep. yep. Right. Bye. 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 Um, Zach Smith, our director at our South County EMS, um, has sent us a request for an appointment. It's an honorable board. I am excited to announce the recent advancement of one of our uh, existed, existing per diem employees in her EMS career, Ab Abigail. Abigail, Whew. 
Abigail Candy has been a longtime EMT, EMT basic with South County and has been enrolled in local paramedic program at GCC for a number of years. She has successfully completed all her requirements, including extensive state testing process to achieve the level of paramedic. Wow. This sure. is the highest level of certification for pre-hospital EMS providers and represents a significant dedication to the in to an individual's chosen career path and a steep education and training requirement that many do not achieve. To continue her advancement and allow her to enter into phase two of the South County EMS training program to upgrade to paramedic, I respectfully request that the current per diem EMT basic Abigail Candy be appointed to the new position of per diem paramedic grade four, step two with a compensation uh, rate of 23 hours, uh, $23 and uh, 19 cents an hour. We are, we at South County EMS are very excited that Abby is looking forward to continuing her career with us and serving the communities of Deerfield, Sunderland and Whaley. Great. Respectively, Chief Zachary Smith, a paramedic and our director. So, um, I'm really excited for that. That'd yes, great. me too. They have um, a great Abby's team really there nice. and we're so, always constantly building it. So yeah, the bench is great. Yeah. Um, I think that's wonderful within as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so do you want to make a motion? Sure. I, uh, um, unless, hey, Dave, do you want to make a motion? You're okay, on the board? I, I move that uh, we uh, appoint Abigail Candy to the position of per diem paramedic grade four, step two, per uh, Chief Smith's request. I'll second that. Um, is there any further discussion? Very excited to have her. Yep. Okay. Um, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Knapp. I just want to say that uh, we had our EMS meeting last Thursday, and um, everything is going meeting? from, yep, our SCEMS meeting, and. Um, How's everything going? Uh, everything is going fine. Our uh, call volume is back up to normal, and, okay. um, you know, there's plenty of PPE. Um, um, Zach has. He's constantly yep. watching that. Good. And, um, it seems like it's it's really good. And oh, I, I forgot to mention that the Darius. Um, we, you know, we were concerned about um, uh, schools, and Darius yeah. Modesto, our superintendent, said this morning on our call that he had at least three months of PPE. As okay. Well. Good. So um, they don't know. We should stop. How we'll go uh, with the burn winter. rate? You know how fast they're going to use it up? Well, in the winter, with everybody's yeah. nose running and stuff, like I'm worried that. Yeah, burn I don't know, but um, we're, everybody's watching it. Zach's watching it. Good. Um, on last week's DPH conference call, randomly they talked about um, syringe shortages regionally, which okay. is how they started out talking about PPE shortages. I forgot yeah. to mention that. But okay. we um, have been stockpiling syringes for a while. For the flu so clinic stuff, yeah. We have about 8,000, I believe. So we're, we'll Good. use some up for our flu clinic. We'll try yep. to replace them. Yep. And we'll try to buy some extra ones. So. Great. Um, so uh, like I said, Zach um, updated us on everything seems to be going fine. Um, yeah, this is all a reflection of well, Carolyn, you and your team have been thinking ahead for the past 10 years. Yeah. Oh, I know. I've been scrubbing around every time I have a little money. I and just, you know, to get something. I know. But, you know, because unfortunately, in everybody's gut, there was going to be something that was going to happen at some point in time. Yeah. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, because of your due diligence and everything else, the town of Deerfield is prepared for this. It's true. Which a lot of places are not. That's true. Yep, it has been Carol. Carol and it's just, you know. Looking out for us. <laughs> and sure. No, I'm serious. It's, it's, ser it's, yeah. it's important well, that people it, understand that, that it takes all that dedication and all those meetings and all that discussion and thinking about to make sure that you're prepared when we run into something like this. Well, we've been lucky over the years to get Little, I mean, we haven't been getting huge grants. No, we've but been getting fifteen hundred dollars here, here twenty five hundred dollars there, and we squirrel away we, some gloves. Um, have been able to buy signs, tables, yep, syringes, gloves. I mean, we had a lot of stuff. Yep. Some of it was expired. Sure, but um, we had a lot of stuff 
built up. Yeah. And, um, so it is. It, yeah. You know, and it, and it's been good because people have been, you know, have put up with it. You know, it's just not me. We have to have meetings sometimes. We of have to have community stuff. Yeah. yeah. We've been doing drills. Yeah. Um, and people have been participating. So we have good um, volunteers now. Yeah. So people are interested. Have, you know, really it has been wonderful. It so, is. It's very good. Um, but. And I just want to say um, to our police department, mm -hmm. the participation of our police department has been fantastic yep. in laying out traffic. And I mean, Jen Bartek. She's amazing. Ad Adam has been wonderful. Adam yep. Sokolowski. John. But Jen Bartek has been working with the seniors. So we have over 100 pre-registered seniors for our senior clinic. That's great. And, um, and Zach has been wonderful about coming to meetings. He did the in just-in-time training was to show That was fantastic. You know, P P E. He did a great on. job. And um, you know, we're going to have our EMS and Conway's EMS too come good. up to our drills. And you know, it just it's really good that we have good community support from our organizations. And, yep. Um, yep. Part of it is just that we are appointing good people. Yeah. And, um, and supporting them. And and supporting them. Yep. So the town is very lucky. Um, yep. I feel like we're such a bubble compared to. I know. Other places, we we really are fine. Yep. We're making it, mm -hmm. um, and we have good people. Yep. And we have and we have really good volunteers yep. stepping forward, and it we'll is. Be in, we'll good. be in a good shape. Yeah. Yep. So thank you, Zach. Oh, so we took a vote, right? No, we just. We, yes, we did. We voted. Okay. We're good. Okay. God, I got distracted with <laughs> syringes. I forgot to mention <laughs> syringes. There's so much stuff going on. I yes, just, there I is. I mean, I have notebooks, I have notes, I I'm going crazy. <laughs> um, okay, so Trevor, um, let's talk, talk about, about the marijuana, marijuana bylaw. Okay, so. Because um, you've been putting a lot of work on this. Yeah, well, with the help of um, Casey, and I've been working collaboratively with um, with John uh, Waite and the, and the planning board, they've been great. Um, and uh, Casey and, and we've been um, getting some help from Lisa Mead, our attorney, on this. So um, I'll just give people a quick background and then it might go to the screen a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, we brought marijuana to town quite a while ago, or at least, the, the, you know, it's been many years that we've been trying to make sure that we could get a stream of revenue. So money. Yeah. Money. Some st st strain of revenue to come to the town. And it's, it's been a long haul. And, you know, and, and there's a lot that has been learned and we've seen how different communities have worked. And, you know, when we come up with our zoning bylaws um, several years back, um, there, there was a lot of unknown. So now we've been able to see the, the state kind of go through their, their growing with, with this product. And, um, and so we, we have found that we want to make some changes based on just experience in town and what we what we think we could we could use and uh, how we think it could help us uh, with with the revenue. So um, originally there were just two very small spots for a zone for marijuana, um, really production and sales, um, you know, cultivation and sales, um, and and that was really in the in the Dedick Industrial Park, which is really full, so nothing happens there. And then there was a small strip kind of across from Dunkin' Donuts and just north of Waitley, there was a small little bit there. The old Deerfield Plastics area was a, was a small spot that was going to be allowed. That was our, our marijuana zone. And then it was also allowed in the whole RA district, which is Residential Agriculture District. And we did that, the town had done that several years back because we thought, well, farmers would take advantage of this and want to take advantage of the product and, and grow. And, you know, we had greenhouse areas. And so we thought we'd have, we could support our farmers and, and they could, you know, get a revenue stream going from it. Well, it turns out that generally it takes a whole lot of money to get into this business. Um, so. Uh, and, and really, with the security needed, and the apparatus, and the buildings, and the you know all the, the fencing, and just kind of all the protection around this product, that it really turns out that it's not really suited for kind of our whole RA district. And and this was uh, something the planning board wanted to change, and we agree with. Uh, we wanted to um, you know gingerly look at that and thoroughly kind of go through that is there certain areas of the RA district we would still want to allow it we do have one cultivation plant that is going to be in the RA district it's down along um, Sawmill River Road or Mill Village Mill Village Road um, 
and and uh, and so that is already a greenhouse farm, and they're going to kind of transition into a grow facility there. So um, so we want to kind of create a zone around that uh, around that, and maybe a couple other parcels to allow that to be a, a one district in the RA district that would allow for marijuana since we already have it there. And then we are going to expand um, kind of down along five and ten, where you know where our commercial area and industrial area is right now because we feel marijuana is not really grown on farms it's going to be grown in buildings with security and all that stuff so we feel and and any retail would would want kind of in the retail district so um we would want retail stores out in any ra district we'd want to kind of put it on five and ten or in town or somewhere where you know, I, I think when other communities have done this, like Northampton, they put their store right on the edge of town, so everybody comes off the highway, gets their stuff, and leaves, and they don't come through town and spend money. And I think if we were going to site one, we'd want it in our area that we could maybe draw uh, some of that traffic to other businesses and support our other communities and businesses with um, with revenue. So, um, so the thought was to expand um, the uh, several. Uh, marijuana overlay districts and they would kind of go over our existing you know industrial and commercial districts and so there are some areas where we think cultivation and manufacturing would make sense and there are some areas where only retail would make sense it doesn't really make sense to have a, a cultivation and manufacturing facility in say downtown you know Deerfield so you know right in downtown it just doesn't make sense to have something like that there but out on five and ten you know Cheney Beat Building, something up higher than that. Um, in, in that range, it makes sense to kind of have that ability to, uh, to grow. You know, we have a, a Volvo dealership that left. You know, there, there's parcels there. There's different parcels around town that it makes sense to reuse and not use up all our farmland for, for growing. So, so that was that aspect. We had a couple other um, things that we want to address with this bylaw change, which would be kind of the setbacks. Originally we put 2,000 foot setback. We weren't really sure what that meant. We wanted to kind of cordon off everything and it turns out that it's not really needed. Most, most areas, most communities are using about a 300 foot setback. And there's already a state setback um, law of 500 feet around anywhere where children congregate like a school and you know, around our, you know, our new park, we would do that as well. So, um, so we're looking at kind of redoing that map. We've had meetings with the with the uh, planning board, um, we're working together to bring one bylaw forward that would accommodate um, these kind of changes. The last change I'll talk about is manufacturing. And uh, manufacturing is, is really kind of turning the marijuana into product, you know, whether they're gummies or oils, or it's really just kind of working on the material itself when they grow it, they process it, package it and kind of make it into a product. And, and we feel, you know, originally when we did this, we limited where that could be. We didn't want any of that in the RA district. We didn't want it kind of spread all over. Um, but we feel like it makes sense that if you're a, cult of, a cultivating facility, because the impact is so low and, and we can get um, revenue from that, you know, additional revenue from those facilities where it doesn't have a great impact on the community, you already have the security, you already have everything set up there to allow them to do, uh, you know, product manufacturing at those, at those facilities. So any current one would have that. But I think there needs to be like, so there'll be some certain overlay areas where cultivation and, and manufacturing are allowed, but not retail. And then some areas where kind of all three are, are allowed and some areas where just retail is, is allowed. So we're kind of working through those decisions with the planning board, with our attorney, you know, with this board kind of talking about that. Um, I just want to bring up on the map um, so you could see where we're, yeah. where we're talking about this. And um, what's really nice with COVID is that we got So 
So this is our RA district. Um, Residential, I think you should say residential, residential agriculture, agriculture district. Yeah. And this is where marijuana, um, retail, uh, marijuana cultivation was allowed in this whole area by special permits. So you still had to go through the planning board and get a, get a, you know, a permit to do that. And this little box right here um, that is drawn is we have a plant kind of right down in here right now. Um, and and that's, where, uh, that's where one facility for, for um, cultivation is going to be and we'd like to allow manufacturing there so we would like to kind of group in you know a couple of parcels around this that would allow some a, a, one overlay district for strictly for uh, cultivation and processing of you know the manufacturing um, when you get to this area here I'll just blow this up a little bit um, I can move this um, well, that's pretty cool Trevor. yes it's really nice I feel like a weatherman so I know. Um, <laughs> So this is downtown, um, and that's our C1 is our commercial district, and then there's other commercial districts where Yankee Candle is, um, and this is kind of further up on five and ten. This is Mill Village Road, um, comes out this way here. So um, this one in purple here, this is going to get notched out a little bit because that'll be our new park. So we'll kind of not allow anything around that. But uh, this area here would, would be allowed along 5 and 10 to allow for manufacturing process and retail. Ma manufacturing and retail. This already does allow that, this little purple one down here. And this large yellow one here already allows it. However, that's the, that, is the, um, that is the industrial park, which is pretty full right now. There may be plans for any of those building owners that may, you know, for change of use. We don't really make a zone, you know, zoning decisions for what's here today, but maybe for tomorrow. So uh, there may be a decision to change something there. Um, uh, th there's already an application we have for Deerfield Naturals for a spot here. Um, so I think really that's the key is kind of looking at the different marijuana overlay districts. This was an early draft plan. So we, um, I, I still want to talk with Lisa, our attorney, and talk with the planning board about maybe doing uh, three overlay districts or just the two but having um, a restriction on the one up here um, because that you know retail is not should not be allowed up here no, at all I agree. and I think we we really don't want you know there's one other area up at the end of town this is up you know this is the quarry uh, one brothers quarry for asphalt and the train park here but there are fields down in here and stuff so and, and there is some kind of industrial. So this, this is another area that may be allowed for, um, you know, cultivation and manufacturing and things, but probably not retail. You know, it's just too far out to kind of keep an eye on. And um, I, I just don't see it as a commercial area up here. So, so this and, and our one here would probably, you know, maybe be the, the, uh, an MO3 where it's just allowed for manufacturing and processing only. Um, and, and, and the businesses that go around that, transportation, that kind of thing. Um, and then just uh, here is more of the retail, you know, sections. So, um, and then these were possible retail, but not manufacturing. There just really wasn't space to kind of do that kind of thing here. Plus you have different character of town in certain areas. And that's why the town already split, you know, for their, for their commercial areas. Um, you know, different than town. Town has a different feel. Five and ten has a different feel, um, so you really just want to be careful with what you put where, and so that's kind of where we're at at the moment. And um, we're really trying to get a plan to go forward for uh, our special town meeting on the uh, the 22nd of October, but we need to have a public hearing for that. With the planning board needs to have this is the planning board's you know vehicle, so that's who makes zoning bylaw changes and all. So we're hoping, and we've been having meetings together with them. Um, we hope to have another one coming up soon. Uh, the last meeting we had with the um, planning board, um, I told them that we were going to work with our town council to take the vehicle that um, Chris Curtis, their, their consultant, has already been working on, all the language. Lisa's working out all that language. Um, and then we'll bring it back to that, that board and hopefully have a public hearing on that. Maybe we can all come together. Maybe there'll be changes from the planning board, some things they may not vote for. Um, but hopefully we can make the case and come together with one, one cohesive plan that we could bring to the town. Oh, so that's, that's really good, Trevor. Do you have any questions, Dave? So, um, 
what's the timeline to have a, a public hearing and the 22nd? I think it's like a couple mm -hmm. of weeks, right? You have to you have to advertise two weeks in a row for a public hearing on zoning. So we need a meeting pretty quick with the planning board early early October, and then they would advertise for two weeks, have a public hearing, and then we would take it to a town meeting on the 22nd. So it's timeline's really short. Okay. So hoping to get all this squared away early on. Um, Maybe I shut off of this. Um, oh, here we go. Great. So, thinking about what a timeline might look like, and I haven't confirmed this. I used to have a, I used to have a spreadsheet that would help me with this. Sure. When I work with the land board. Um, I think Trevor's right. I think we have to schedule a meeting with the planning board pronto. Yep. And discuss. It. Because then you then you have your public hearing um, before town meeting. Yep. They're not interested in having a public hearing the day of town meeting. Right. They want um, time. So I think. So what I was saying, maybe I should send you guys an email on what that timeline could look like. But keep in mind, this is the planning board as it is. well. They it is. It's they their, need to. Beautiful. They need. We need their buy-in to even get to a hearing process. Right. Exactly. And I think we have it, but, but it, it's definitely their vehicle, their, their car to drive, and we're just passengers, and we're hoping that we can kind of come together because mm -hmm. it, it, it makes a big difference monetarily for the town to make these changes, to allow these changes um, for, for future growth and for next year. I mean, the, the money is going to be tough, and it, I understand you know, that a lot of times the planning board says we don't make decisions based on money. This board does. I mean, we I mean, we need to focus on money and how how we fund the town to keep taxes as low as we can and still have well, revenue growth. Well, you like, know, one yeah. thing we, our townspeople have to realize is that residential taxes don't pay the bills. Industrial and commercial do, and we've got to build our industrial commercial base within the town of Deerfield to keep ourselves solvent yes and keep our tax rates down yep we have a good mix now we need to keep uh, it that way if we do you know it's yep. if, if you try to go too far to that residential side you're going to see those tax rates going way up and people are going to be upset they're upset about them right now and quite frankly they're nothing compared to some areas i have a brother-in-law that lives in granby that has a house a half a size of mine and pays fourteen thousand dollars a year in taxes on it um, which people would uh, just go crazy in this town if they had to pay that. So do you want me to go through this list of changes to the bylaw that Lisa was talking about? Um, I can do that on the board if you want or just kind of verbally tell you what's going on. I, I think you could just go over it. Um, I mean, you did a yeah. really good job so far. So, so really just the changes are, you know, still we're not allowing social consumption absolutely page, not. you know area so we, that's just not happening at this time right. um so that was that. that was a definitely no at this time the other thing was the setback originally it was two thousand feet and really it was just two thousand feet and it didn't name the each town so right. and that was the we main change the, that we the, wanted to yes. make sure it was, was within the town mistake. of deerfield yep. so we've made that change and we we've dropped it to 300 feet because that's what the planning board thought was appropriate um it's what other communities are using so and, and it was um, from, from building to building instead of property line to property line. Because that they had made an exception early on with Deerfield Naturals, I think, and they went from building to building instead of property line. And so that's what we thought we would do if that's, if that's correct. So she'll check into that. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else. It was- I um, thank you for correcting that because that was um, sure. an oversight on my part to say, you know, not just limit to the town of Deerfield. There was um, a couple of other areas where, oh, it was talking about, you know, so uh, this is the planning board's uh, bylaw, and, and there was a section, it was prior to issuance of a building permit for marijuana establishments, the applicant is required to, to post with the town treasurer a bond, you know, so if they were closed down, how did they get rid of everything? Yep. Similar to what we do in, um, in, for solar, and I think the question was, could we in, could we just do this in the 
in the host community agreement instead of putting it in the bylaw. So I think it might might make sense to do that in our host host community agreements instead of, you know, you want to try and keep your bylaws as clean as possible and yeah. not put a ton of things in them, and and you just deal with the other stuff. So, um, so that that was a question well, that Lisa it's easier, had. It's easier to update a host agreement. Yes. Than to update a, I mean, what you a whole put town in, bylaw. You think you're being really smart and putting in all the stuff. It trips it, you up. It trips you up. Yep, absolutely. It's not, it's not um, like another section was here. What this section um, on the application requirements, it wasn't necessary to include this language as it was inherent in the special permitting process. So, um, and then there, so then there was the schedule. So um, these are notes that, that I think are going back to either to maybe add an MO3 because we had MO1 and MO2, but I think MO3, it just makes kind of more sense unless, and I'm not an expert at zoning at all. Maybe Lisa will come back or the planning board will say, no, we can do the two and just make some changes based on those things. I just wanted to kind of keep it nice and clean. Um, and that's really it. Those, those were the real changes that we wanted to deal with. Um, so, so uh, Lisa was pretty sure that we could um, still eliminate social uh, yes the social use. As far as I know, yeah. Um, it said, Trevor, uh, let's see. So social consumption, um, all marijuana social consumption operations are expressly prohibited anywhere within the town of Deerfield, provided, however, that said prohibition shall apply only insofar as the same does not conflict with Massachusetts law or has not been um, preempted thereby. So maybe the yeah. state does something that would preempt. Well, it's, it's the this. same state process that the ABCC uses. Yes. A town has the right to say that they're going to be dry. Mm -hmm. Rockport, Mass. That's true. They're dry. Yeah, yeah. It's the town's decision. It's not a state decision. Yeah. That's on alcohol. Right. Uh, with marijuana, it's the same thing. The town has the discretion to say whether they they want the, a public consumption area or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm just I'm just not supportive of the public consumption because we can't regulate it. In right. Sense, you, you don't you know. know. We don't have a breath way, way, way. You know, as so, you do for alcohol, right. Yeah. right? So we don't know if people are driving impaired or not. Normally, I don't want to say normally, but an awful lot of marijuana is usually bought and consumed at home. Yeah. So, you know, I don't have a problem. And Lisa's question was, do we still want to do that? And I, I think we do at this time. We can always come back and change it, but right now, yeah, I mean, we're I'm not. not so right. the, the next one was the 2,000 foot area, which we talked about. Um, Somebody has their hand up. Oh. Who does? Somebody, 665-7867. Oh, please. If anyone has a comment. Do you have a question? You can unmute yourself. Star six, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is Bruce St. Peter's. Oh, hey, Bruce. Um, I called this. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Dave. Hello there. Hello. Um, I Welcome. called into the plan planning board meeting there when they had this the other night. Yes. With a couple concerns, and I'm and they said they were looking at them, but I don't see anything addressed on them, and I don't know whether they looked at them or whether they got kind of lost in the discussion. But oh, go ahead. I guess one of the things. Uh, is uh, under 4666 the additional requirements and conditions? 4666, um, yeah. Now, uh, which one of them is location. Right. Now, uh, is that permitting a medical marijuana treatment center to go anywhere in town? Because mm -hmm. by definition, uh, a, uh, medical, uh, me uh, a uh, marijuana establishment does not include a medical marijuana treatment center. I thought they had, so is I, that exi exempting that? So that means that can go any place in town. Well, I was under the impression that the medical marijuana was was grouped merged. in. They yeah, merged, merged with DPH. Like DPH is no longer in the business, and CCC took it all over. So they're all called medical marijuana establishments now, and there well, isn't really a separate. I could be wrong about that, Bruce, but I I, I thought they, they don't they don't define the medical separate from the. They just say marijuana establishments, Bruce. From what my understanding is. Well, yes, is. but in, 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 under the definition of mar, um, marijuana establishment, it, it says except a medical marijuana treatment center. 
Uh, that might be something that we need to pull out. Yeah, uh, so that was in the well, um, that was what, in definitions. That's what I met, had mentioned at the planning board when the planning board was discussing this. And uh, 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 let me find that here. I think that. Was, so that was is that in the first paragraph? Uh, if you go to uh, well, there again, what I printed out, it came out on page three under definitions. Page three. Uh, okay. Uh, marijuana establishment. Uh, yes. And okay. It goes marijuana. through to define everything, and the last part of the sentence says, "Except a medical marijuana treatment center." Let me just. So read then, this when you go to forty-six sixty-six, would it? Uh, it says the following requirements and conditions shall apply to all marijuana establishments, huh. but a okay. medical marijuana treatment center is by definition is not a marijuana establishment. So let me. Yeah, that's a good question. So I'll check in with Lisa on that. Yeah, that might. That might have been failed to been removed. She did. She did cross out marijuana establishments permitted in accordance with these regulations are considered to be commercial and or manufacturing use and are not considered to be agricultural, which we know. Um, so uh, I will find out about that. Thank you for bringing that up again, Bruce. Yeah. Um, okay. The, the other question I had, which um, I'm not sure whether anybody had looked at it, was um, the, there's. Uh, no mention uh, as far as definitions for uh, manufacture or processing or anything uh, or even cu cultivation as to where cloning would fit in. Oh, right. And you if, you, about uh, cloning. if you Google uh, uh, marijuana, evidently they are starting to clone uh, uh, marijuana out in California and well, so forth. So that's all uh, they use, Bruce. In the they, they only in use Minnesota. clone plants. I mean, anybody who Pardon? grows marijuana only uses a clone. They, they don't, like, grow f typically from seed. They clone constantly. Right. They're, cl they're cloning the plants, yeah. Right. So is that a cultivation or a process? If it's a cultivation, then that should be included in the definition. Um, uh, okay. And, uh, and, and as well as uh, multiple other places, uh, you know, a craft uh, marijuana cooperative, uh, and there again, if it, if it, is it, you know, your definition of manufacture, well, is clone cultivation or is it manufacturing? I would think it was cultivation because you're you're kind of you're growing the thing. You're not ma manufacturing yeah, is just like making an oil, making a um, you know a gummy. Or the manufacturing, the way we um, have been told, is really just the processing. Uh, of the raw material, like you would distill okay. lavender oil from lavender, it's that kind of stuff. But the cloning, I'm I'm pretty sure the cloning would come under cultivation mm -hmm. because that's how. Well, then, I, I'm, good I'm question. Just, yeah. I'm just saying it should be clarified. Okay. Yeah. Is all I'm saying. So we'll find out if it's clarified yeah. in others and, and, and well, where it should you be. You know what, Bruce? That's a really good point because I'm not sure if we have to um, list cloning. Right. We we'll find list. out. Yeah. We'll find out. Should it be a list or should it just yeah, be because, part of that? I mean, everybody is cloning right now, actually. That's and all I they do. Understand. Yeah, because yeah. because that would also, uh, that same question would go under the definition of a marijuana cultivator. Right. You know, right. Is, uh, yep. Okay. All right. So we'll that, check in on that, too. That's relatively a new thing. I mean, no, I don't want to say it's new, but... Well, it, since Ex exactly, first, exactly. Since it's we very started, hard. when we first started, remember it was a big deal about seeds. Now right. se seeds is like nobody even does seeds. Right. Yep. And okay. I guess my uh, last comment is under uh, E, physical requirements, ventilation. Um, uh, let me find that. What page is that on? on under E? No. Uh, it's on the last page. Findings. Physical requirements. Oh, let's see. That's findings. Um, that's security. Which which section is it? It's not under find. Oh, uh, application. Oh, under requirements. Uh, let's see. It's it's forty six sixty six. D. Oh, D. Thank you. D. Physical requirements. Uh, okay. Uh, four. Roman numeral four. Okay. Number, number two. Yep. Okay. No, no order, odor from marijuana or its processing can be detected by a person with an unimpaired or 
otherwise normal sense of smell at the exterior of the medical marijuana business or any I think adjoining that's... use or property. Well, that in infers that the neighbor next door is fine, but you skip a couple of houses and that stink can go over there just fine. Well, I, the reason I, I bring this up is because I've read several articles in different parts of the country where uh, the odor has gone through some of the mountains and several miles away. Well, people have actually sold their houses because the stench is so bad. Yeah, I don't. And they have I gone can't. to the cities and towns and they would not back them up. Well, a couple of things. And so I think that that needs to be changed from adjoining property. It, it shouldn't be able to smell it by anybody's property as far well, as I'm concerned. Well, you know, I kind of have a, have a little bit of an issue with that, too, because I, I, I don't see how you're ever going to get it where you can't smell that stuff at all. I mean, I can see there has to be some sort of level of, uh, I mean, you take you know, a, a farm, I mean, and a, and a, a dairy farm. I mean, that, that, it, the smell of that and when it gets all over the roads, um, tugging around, I mean, it's very hard to kind of limit. You had Yankee Candle early on was like, well, you knew every scent they were smelling, you know, or making. Um, or the breweries. Or the breweries. I mean, I don't know how you can limit this business and not any other. Um, I know, but what is what is the le what is the cutoff level where it becomes obnoxious and a, somebody a nuisance. has to move because I, of a I marijuana agree. plant? You know, with a farm, a farm already exists. If you move there, you're taking your chances. But well, uh, by the same time, somebody already lives in a house, and a marijuana place moves into them, and they can't stand it. That's a different. That's a different uh, side of the. Well, point. you could also, you know, you live in the RA district. Somebody could start a farm, you know, and, and have a chicken farm next door. You ever been to one of those? Holy mackerel! Oh, I worked on. I worked on. Did you? Oh, they're brutal. I on brutal. Yeah, they're um, they're but no, I agree. Yeah, let's. I'll flush that well, out a little bit more, Bruce. I think we'll we'll look I, into it, that. It, it, it's it's an opinion. That's all yep. it is. It's no, just, I hear you. you know, yeah. So okay. Thank I mean, you. Can, that was great. Okay. I can, I can see why they say adjoining property, but I think Bruce is right because if it if if it, the smell is really obnoxious. Yeah, well, I think of, you know, the hemp in our, you know, yeah. by our neighborhood right now is starting to smell because they're getting more mature. Um, and those are outdoor, you know, there's no protection on any of that at all on the hemp. Right. It's the same plant, it just doesn't have THC in it, so it has the same smells, the same everything. Oh, no, you can smell yeah. it if you go by no building. Yeah, so I don't... I mean, not the current manufacturer, but the... Right. No, exactly. Yeah, the nothing... Farmers, but the, the farm... You know that has the hemp like our house, yep. and um, I don't know. So it's something. Well, to think there again, about. It, it, it just, it just, it just a question. That yep. I was no, it's a good, it's good, opinion, good point. So, so thank you, and, uh, thank you for that. But, but anyway, that was uh, that was my comments for tonight. And, okay, uh, I appreciate you for that. Your time. Yeah, thank no, you for Bruce, joining us. We you. always, we always appreciate having you here. Uh, we'll so. follow up because that's. The, um, I appreciate you reading it. Yeah. I mean, that's the problem when you look at the stuff over and over again. You know. You don't pick up everything. Yeah, so, so it's good. We need all eyes on it. Okay. Dave, did you have any more? Good night. Nope. Thank you, Bruce. No. Thank, Thank you, Bruce. Bruce. Appreciate it. Um, anything else on that? I think, I, you know, so my idea is to just get with Lisa again and, and Casey and just try to keep moving this yeah. forward. Is there any objection on any of this stuff or you feel like okay with what we're doing no, I, so I'm, far? No, I'm really happy that you're doing this because I do, you know, the problem is five or six years ago when Dick and I were going sure. to you know, meetings, we were trying to be cutting edge, we were trying to think of revenue for the town, we were ready, we haven't collected any revenue, and, yep. you know, we still don't really have anything activity. No. We need to get some money in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but updating it, I think, is really important. Yeah, I think so. Because, you know, this is, what we did in the beginning was brand new. And yep. No, no other work has been done. Okay. Yes, Casey. You're on mute. You're, you're unmute. muted. You got to mute. Unmute yourself. I can either talk or are. not talk. Darn it. You can talk. <laughs> um, we didn't want to hear the potato chips crunching. Time. Oh, no. You don't want to hear half of what I have to say. <laughs> um, Jennifer and I were talking about timeline. I think, Trevor, if we want to have a hearing, yep. um, and we do. which pre which it should be preceded by a discussion, yes. I think we're looking at next week, we want to properly okay. notice a hearing, if they're willing. Yes. And if they're willing to have a hearing a day or two before town meeting. Yes, that'd be great. Let's try to get that to happen. So we were backtracking that time frame. Okay. Okay. 
Whatever and I think you do. really need to see whether John's willing to push that with planning board. I hope so. And whether they're willing to participate. Yep. That'd be great. Okay. okay. All right. Whatever you need to do to get the dates, that'd be great. We'll make, sh we'll make sure we're here if they can. Mm -hmm. So I'm done with that. All right. Um, do we have, is Phoebe on the line or is Phoebe around? No, the, um, no, the MOA, the uh, MOU, the only difference from what we originally voted on was they added the word district. Oh, okay. So what we already we, voted on this. We did. No, we didn't. I thought no. we did. No, no, this, no, was this too. is the MO. We got it right before the meeting last time. I gave it to you to look at. Um, so this is the MOU yeah. that would allow us to pay the COG yeah, to do support and, and uh, surge work for the town through the CARES Act. We have to have it in place in order for them to do our surge support. Do, do so Phoebe actually is unable to meet with us. She had an unexpected conflict, Carolyn. Okay. So I put this, I, I, she wondered if you guys would sign the MOU. She's certainly willing to come back and talk to us about the question I had sent her after you and I spoke, which was what are the activities that CPHS has been doing for the town during the surge? So she's willing to come back and talk about that. She was hopeful that you would sign the MOU, but I told her I didn't know whether that would happen or not. Oh, well, the only thing is, um, you know, we, we, ha we ha a love Lisa. We pay for her every year. You know, we budget for her. And then we had two payments uh, from the state originally. Um, smaller communities like Shrewsbury, Northfield, Waitley, uh, they got like $8,000 twice over. So that's the leap. And it's based on population. So we would at least get 16,000. So I think it's between 16,000 and 20,000 is what we have already given them. And um, I know we sent for Dick's extra time, we got reimbursed for about $7,100 of that. But in my mind, there's still like $10,000 already just still sitting there. Um, so. And I've been involved in every single case that um, has been traced. You know, I, I, I check Maven two or three times a day. So, um, I mean, I don't actually make the phone calls, but, you know, uh, all, all that much. But a, a few of them I was involved in and, you know, actually knocked on doors and stuff. So, um, I, I'm just hesitant because, I mean, I feel I'm like we're going to be too. able to spend all our CARES money ourselves and I, I'm, I, I I don't know Trevor do you I, that means we would have to handle all of the stuff they normally would do for us ourselves you uh, I know how many meetings you're in <laughs> I know that I know well, but what, what I just don't want to pay our valuable re well don't we already pay yeah I, I mean, mean I'm just trying to understand why there's more money needed and and, and when do we decide on how much we need for help from them? I mean, um, how, how much, what are the, what are the um, acts like? So this is what you need to ask Phoebe. Right. And so if you want to wait meeting. until the 7th, we can ask Phoebe the 7th. Yes. Yeah, I'm just, I don't, I don't want to get a bill that that money could be spent, at, you know, at, at our schools. I mean, we're, we, we are, I know this money has to be spent by December, and I don't want to leave any yeah, money. Yeah, but we, I don't want to leave any money on the table. But and I certainly want. But here's the question: Are we prepared to do? Do we have the same resources that CPHS has right now on the ground to do that work? Because well, if we don't, it's going to cost us more money. We're already paying That's all I'm though, saying. for yeah, it. but we're paying. So what else already. are we going to get when we but give them is, more money? If there is additional. Surge. This is what this is for. If there is additional surge outside of what they already have money for, because they're getting money in, so, so it goes above what they have for money, they can no longer do that for us, and we don't have the resources, or may not have the resources, in the manner that needs to happen to do that ourselves. So, uh, so a couple of things. Tell advocate. 
I want to know who decides that there's a surge, how, how much money they decide they can bill us and when. Um, so write these down and, take the, and have Phoebe discuss them. Okay. I think you I mean, need to write your questions down and discuss them with Phoebe on the 7th. You know, I mean, I, so part of me feels like we, we would be spending the money and the, and the services would go to other towns. Right. And I mean, so I'm not, not that, that I'm selfish question. because I, because I'll finish, not that I'm selfish because I think that support in other towns helps us in the long run. It's like right. help your neighbor, they're safe, makes us safe. So it's not that I'm thinking like it's only for Deerfield and only, you know, ship, but I think that it, it, it gets very kind of uh, fuzzy when, when somebody else decides there's a surge somewhere and, um, and they decide how much they're gonna bill and, and all. I just wanna make sure I understand the finances and who's responsible and what we're actually getting. I, I mean, I understand they're worried about if there's an outbreak in the schools. Um, we've had, we've been very lucky. There's been zero outbreak at North Vermont Herman, zero outbreak at Deerfield Academy, zero at Eagle Brook. But I actually just had a conversation with Lisa today about um, Deerfield Academy is reaching out to the Red Caps. It's the uh, volunteers at, um, in the universities here in Massachusetts with interns of public health interns so that the tracing would not be at the FERCOG if there's an outbreak. It would be through the red caps. And they wanted to know if we would be all right with it. And I said, you know, the red caps did a really, really good job in the beginning before there was a CTC, the Community um, Tracing Collaborative. We worked really hard in the beginning uh, of the whole emerging of the CTC to have, you know, we were giving them cases. So Lisa was involved. Um, it was time for her, as well as my time, to make sure we had a relationship with the CTC. So, um, you know, we're trying everything we can to be prepared for a surge, whether it's in the public schools or the private schools, and, or in the community. And so I, I'm just hesitant to, um, I mean, I don't want to build. And I think you have to ask Phoebe. But I think it, this is more than just the surge. The, the questions I'm hearing from you guys are more than just the surge. Right. So I think you do have to have a conversation we with do. Phoebe. Understand that you have three people ahead of you on an agenda on the 7th. That's fine. I know. Um, it's important. So it's going to be a late night. I know, but what they're, talking, uh, what they're talking about, what services, we don't use their services, like meeting on sector-specific guidance. Dick and I go to all these meetings so that we know what the guidance is. And we have Dick um, reviewing school opening plan, reopening plans. I have been, you know, on every single meeting with uh, the public schools and the private schools to do the reopening, as well as Dick has. Trevor has had a couple, and I think, I don't know if you have sat on any, but no. I mean, we have been involved as select boards. We don't want the FERCOG to run are the reopening in town. We want to be able to make those decisions. Um, inspecting food establishments, Dick does that. Responding to complaints about face coverings, Dick does that. Traveler quarantines, we've all been doing that. Um, business compliance, Dick has been making, I mean, he goes to Yankee Candle all the time. He's been to several different business establishments to make sure they're in compliance constantly. And, we, and you know- So these been, are bigger questions. I mean, these are these things. These are bigger that, questions than just surge. I think you need to speak to Phoebe. We're, we're not. Because uh, I can't answer any of that. I know. We do we this know you already. Can. And I, um, I don't want our money so Well, but out. keep in mind, Carolyn, if something happens to Richard, we don't have anybody to back him That's up. That's not true. We have well, Valerie. We here like that. But Valerie lives in Windsor. She lives further out than I do. I know, but. So I'm just I'm trying to be the be devil's advocate to help everybody that's fine. think around. That's what we need. Yeah, no, that's fine. What I, what I feel are bigger questions to the entire program, not just this. Okay, well, that's, that, so then we should have don't that Don't have discussion. things in place that are backup. They do. All right. That's all well, I'm saying. I'm, I'm just saying that. So I'm going to confirm the 7th with, with Phoebe. Yeah. 
I mean, I. All right, I'll confirm the sentence with Phoebe. All right, just what we're looking for is information beyond, I mean, we, we pay for Lisa eight hours a week and we are, um, you know, we have some money still left over, I'm, I'm assuming, from the original payments from the state. So maybe it, she doesn't feel like it's enough, but I don't know. Your specific questions, I think you should write down because there's no way I'm gonna be able to remember all of them. Because right, you fine. all have different questions. So it might be useful if you wrote them down so that so that you can focus your questions yep. and your and the conversation to get through it. Okay. Right. I think we have to schedule a meeting with Phoebe. My, yeah. Yeah. It may be worthwhile just to schedule a meeting with Phoebe yeah. if you all three have questions. Yeah. Because like I said, you've got three things ahead of you, one of which may change, but two of which won't. <laughs> well, for the seven. I know the Irving, the payment for the town of Irving went to um, the Quabbin Health District. And when the FERCOG went to ask for additional money from Irving, Irving says, well, we pay you for Lisa already, so we're covered. And they didn't hand over any money. Our money went to But the do they have somebody else doing that work is the question. That's what we don't know. And there may be circumstances we don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. I'm just saying that our money went to the district direct. So. And that's not the wrong question to have, Carolyn. Everything you brought up are valid questions. I just can't answer them. And I do think it's a conversation with Baby, particularly because you're concerned about the fact that the MOU could tie, could tie us to paying them more when you're not even sure what we're doing. So it's completely reasonable well, to ask the question. I mean, well, uh, for example, we have been asking for accounting of the money that was sent to them. And we have yet to get that, right, Trevor? I mean, I know you've asked as well as me. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, it's, it's a little wishy-washy. So yeah, I think it's just talking with her a little bit more and understanding what her needs are. Is this the only way that we can help her? That, yeah. I just want to talk that out a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we can just have a separate meeting, Casey. If you're if we're doing the thirtieth, I know what she's worried about is is the uh, filing dates on this stuff. So um, right, we, our deadline to do our first report is Friday. I know, I know, this, and I don't know that we have anything that relates to this. So right now we don't have anything that relates to this, but this is only the first report, and that's one thing that nobody's been clear with me about is does this contract have to be in place when you do your first report if those activities haven't happened yet? So, or so I, to the best of my knowledge, they haven't. So, you know, that's a valid question, but we have to turn this in on Friday. Our first CARES Act report. Uh. Well, no, I mean, if it doesn't happen, we send them an explanation as to why it isn't in place, because you have questions. Yeah. I spent four weeks with an explanation to these people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna, I'm not afraid to ask, Frank. <laughs> well, you were going to try to set up a meeting for next week, so let's just put it on for next week, Casey. Okay. Are you still there? So do you want to try to do that on the 30th? Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'll get with you on a time for that day. Okay. Okay. Because Dave, you still can do the 30th. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I just, um, then we got to get back in the schedule for Dave. Um, You know what? You're, you're, we lost your picture, Casey. Are, are you still, We're still there? We're still online, though. I'm here. Oh, hold okay. on. Yeah, but we can't see if you're raising your hand or, or being crabby at us. I oh. can. Oh, you can? <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda is the ABCC <laughs> advisory regarding extension of the allowance of outdoor table service. Um, my understanding is there's no changes, is that correct? It's just being allowed to November 1st, Casey? 
No, there's so extension. So you, you are allowed to go to the September or November 1st. Wait, let me read it again. I had a note, but I can't find it. <laughs> well, I'm basically, it's that if they want to make changes, yeah. Select board has the authority to uh, allow that change to go further than that deadline. Up to up to and until 60 days after the end of the state of emergency. Now, the one thing I do remember, I did remember part of it, um, the local licensing authority may issue extensions automatically to all licenses or may do so on request from individual licensees. Okay. So you could, you could handle it that way. Okay. What's the question? Well, this is just no, it's, it's a new notification that, we, um, that it's extended to November 1st. Oh, yes. The outdoor? Yeah, the outdoor. Okay. Um, so it extends beyond November 1st. Yeah. Right. And how uh, does it seem to... Oh, Dave, here. So the ABCC approval isn't oh. required to make these extensions. Yeah. And any licensee that was, or the license, local licensing authority can modify any prior approval that they've made. Okay. So if somebody, nobody's come to us with this yet. Um, they, they, right now our application for outdoor dining is set up so that Dick reviews it, I review it, John reviews it, and we write our approval on it. Um, I haven't received a question about it to do an extension. I think people are watching the weather. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they talk about snow removal and all that other concern, but, right. um, but the, basically it's saying ABCC does not requiring it's not approval is not required for these extensions so um i think you do have to notify them if we have made if, if we've extended it i think right so. right but just like we did that we approved okay do we need we don't need to vote on that no no I mean, that's no but something. i wanted to bring it to your attention because it may come up soon okay well we got the new guidelines they came out with today as well right yes new restaurant guidance yeah I said, well, it's not effective until Monday the 28th, but, yeah. um, but still it's, yeah, it came out, well, it came out Friday. I mean, it came out Tuesday. Um, and then they talked about it. Um, I, well, they will talk about it again on Friday and then it will be effective on Monday. Um, there was a lot of questions on the bar, you know, you're not, you're allowing food at the bar and, Eating at the bar, but not drinking at the bar. Mm -hmm. I don't know why there. A lot of people have just been pushing tables up to the bar and eating at the, not actually eating on the bar. Yeah. Or drinking on the bar. Okay. All right. Let's um, go on to the um, special town meeting warrant. Okay. Pretty rough. Yep. No, it's fine. So it's a starting it's starting fine. point. So you've got. Yeah. Acceptance of grants and capital expenditures, um, Airfield 350 funds, legal expenses we were talking about, right? Thinking of David's comments. Yep. Uh, classification plan. What was that classification plan for? Was that? Uh, okay. Like I said earlier, the assistant superintendent's position is not classified oh, on, it's the not plan, on the so plan, so it has to be classified okay, according to the bylaw. Yep, that makes sense. Um, and, and then, we have the article about the North Main Street recreational land development. Right. I don't know exactly what flavor this is going to look like. I right. talked to John about it late this afternoon, and he wants me to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to reach out to Lisa. Okay. And then we have the Deerfield zoning bylaw amendment for the floodplain district. Now, this is a new bylaw, correct? Yes. So this was just approved by the planning board last week. And it's ready to go on an article, so I included it. It basically replaces the old bylaw. It's got a bunch of new sections, a new sub, and new subsections. So this, that's why it says replace or amend. I'm not sure which one Lisa's going to want because I've seen it both ways. 
do you um, think it needs, so we'll see what Lisa says. Do you think it needs to go on this one or should it wait till the annual town meeting? I don't know. My, my impression was they wanted to get it done. I guess they've been working on it for a while. I know. Um, so it's hard at a special So I don't meeting. know. I mean, I, I guess, you know. John also has two articles that he wants me to add. One for, um, to have three offices approved to work beyond 65, I think. And there's another one that he wants me to include. So he's going to send me a note. Okay. So this is, again, a rough draft. I wasn't ready to send no, it out to everybody that's fine. because... It's okay. No, I, it's I, exactly what it was. Yeah. So just what else do you guys want on it is my question. I didn't add marijuana yet. Well, you have a, you have left, a spot for uh, it. You spot, yeah. I have a slot. Yeah, yes. that's fine. That's fine. That's all we um, needed just to see that it was going to be there. And um, we'll, we'll get something done. Uh, on this um, floodplain zoning, um, the, the, did the planning board have a hearing on it yet? Yes. Oh, they did? Yeah. Well, I think so. But... Not real. I don't think it was like a public hearing like everybody came in, but it was an online public hearing, right? I think they had it. I think that started before I got here. Oh, okay. So maybe if they I have. remember yeah. what Chris Curtis said. So it's been going through its incarnation. Yeah. I honestly. Well, if we're having I think they had already had it. Well, if we're having the marijuana one, there's no reason not to have the flood plan. That's what kind of how I feel. I just wanted to make sure that people had enough time to yeah. really study what the implications of this are. I'm I I I I'm going to reread it yeah. because um, I think it's a little bit different than what uh, I was hearing. Yeah. So I'll reread it. Yeah. I'll reread it. Um, Casey, Casey, do we need an article about the? Uh, Increase in insurance expenditures. What increase? Oh, wait. Well, increase school. in insurance? Expenditures. I thought our insurance premiums went up quite a bit and that it was more than what we had budgeted. We had more people. Well, it did go up, and we think it's because of several buildings that we had had a, an entire year yeah. of, for instance, scats on the system, on our insurance. So there are some things out there are there are anomalies. Now, we could put an article on for that. Um, yeah, but how much are we talking about? I don't about? know. What, how much well, we that's the thing. Talk about a percentage. Brenda didn't give me an amount. Yeah, so we should yeah, see if I it's mean, a transfer thing we can do instead. Yeah. I, I mean, you can do a transfer. Yeah. yeah. The reason legal expenses is on there is because, and I'm, I'm that's a giant, toying with that's giant. contracted services as well. Yeah. The reason legal's on there is because, frankly, I thought we were treated extremely badly at the last meeting to do the transfer related to both of those accounts. And so one of the comments from the finance committee was, well, we think these types, this, the amounts of these expenditures should go to town meeting. Okay, we need more money for collective bargaining. Right. I, we can take it to town meeting. That's fine. Because frankly, I, I didn't think that was necessarily the right way to handle it. These were unforeseen expenses. Nobody saw that coming. Nobody saw any of this coming. We have no idea what collective bargaining is going to cost. Yep. And based on what I'm seeing, um, other legal expenses have gone up because things are happening and we've been I've yeah. been warned by my peers that we can expect more to happen I'm sure and some of them are related to personnel issues some of yeah. them are other things just things that come up out of the blue that don't yeah. fit within well, we're the month the monthly the, portion the monthly amount we pay so on the other hand are we comfortable with going through an entire recall process because I've talked to several of my peers most places do not offer what Mead, Tallerman and Costa offers in terms of a monthly right. um, a, a monthly allotment 
to handle any legal question outside of two parameters. That's pretty nice. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, the no, they, I know they get nailed. The other thing is this: that we, um, you know, we have a full staff now, and we're getting stuff done. You know, the, the, there's a difference between four years ago when I started, and we had no town administrator, and nobody was doing anything. I mean, so, you know, we're busy, and we have a lot going on, and we're running the town with a lot happening. That costs money. Um, well, I'm cool. sorry, but it, we have to do a lot of business in town that has not been done for many years. That costs, you know, attorney's fees, and, and it just does. I mean, all the grants we're working, all the things that they we're have to do. We're finally getting reading. Oxford Pickle ready to I mean, sell. There's, there's so I mean, much God. that's happening that's going on that, you know, people aren't really aware that's true. of. Um, that, that, that's the, true. The cost and if, of doing business if is three people on the finance committee are so concerned about it, then okay, let's take it to town meeting and tell, tell town meeting. Yep. So we expect to see increases because of land use defense. Yep. collective bargaining, yep. and several other items either related to COVID or adjacent to COVID, because when COVID hit, there were so many things that nobody anticipated having to deal with. Of course. Never mind what you said, your day-to-day -day stuff. Yep. I can tell you at least three contracts did not go through council, and they bit us in the butt when Absolutely. I got here. Absolutely. Oh, no, I do, but contract review is a, is a monthly expense. Right. They don't charge me an hourly Understood. rate for that. Yeah. But it, it's just part and parcel of, like you said, doing business. Right. And I, I just know I encountered a lot of things that hadn't been dealt with, and so I've had to make calls. Yep. Solar. Right. Next amp. That mm -hmm. negotiation has taken at least a year longer than Beth Greenblatt considered. Yeah. So, you know, okay. going to the types of legal costs that, we're, that nobody can, can really frame out in so, an estimate. So if you, you don't get, know what If you could get with uh, Brenda and just kind of go over um, what some thoughts are on that, you know, what, what we may need, um, and then we should talk with, um, you know, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and, and all of us to, about, you know, we should have a meeting coming up shortly with the Finance Committee and the Capital Improvement to see about those capital expenditures that we put off in the spring. Do we have the funds to do them? What is our, you know, what is our outlook look like for the year right now? Um, you know, I know Brenda will have some revenues shortly. She may not have them. Um, I know she's going away. I think she was going to get some expenditures out by the end of the month, but revenue will probably have to wait until the beginning of October. But you know, if we have a meeting with finance about the beginning of October, we could talk about, you know, the second week we could talk about what we want to do for the capital expenditures. Does that make sense? So we need, yeah. so just so you know, we need to have this warrant posted the 8th. Yeah. Okay. So that's not a lot the of other thing is, <laughs> Casey, um, seeing we have a free cash number, is it too early to request certain funds to go into stabilization? No. We should no, do. it's not. You could do a stabilization article. Well, why don't we do that? Yeah. We'll come up Thank with, you. we'll work with the finance committee and come up with a number. Yep. Um, I think that robust discussion should include the fact that if we have to make up revenues, free cash is probably your best bet to start out with yeah. Yeah. first. Because stabilization is one of those things that you hope you don't have to spend for operations. Right. Free cash is a little bit easier to explain to the town right. people. Right. Yep. Yep. All right. So you want an insurance article, stabilization article. Yep. What else? Well, we may or may not want that insurance article. We'll have to see what our expenses, what the actual dollar expense is. I, I don't. Which, I, I'd still like to just have a placeholder for stabilization, even if we decide yeah, not to do it. I agree. Oh, but uh, just put uh, the yep, placeholder there. there. Yeah, 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 I've got it on my list. Definitely. Yeah, yep. David, I think that's a good idea. We, I know we have to rush to think about it, but. Let's, let's add so that. think about next week. You really have to meet next week. Yeah, yeah we're going to meet next week. So that will give us some time. To and I'm it. sure that Finance Committee and Capital are going to give me grief about the fact that all of a sudden I'm asking them to meet. Well, no, well, not all of a sudden. It's the rate of what happens. <laughs> yep. 
Well, they, it's okay. No, they we've been saying right. We I, said right along that we we're going to have a special town meeting to adjust whatever, right. review and adjust our I finances. I just want to see them again. Talk and, about where right, we're at. Um, you know, we we said that in September. So mm -hmm. here we are in October. It's not. You know, it shouldn't be shocking news. No, I think they'll be fine with that. Yeah, I mean, I think they will be. There fine. are several towns around us doing the same thing. Yeah, we yeah. need to kind of regroup, and then you know, and then again in the winter, kind of regroup yeah. again and see where we're at. I just, we you know, right, right. Yep. And we'll just get some. We should get some current information from Darius just yep. to. See what you know, see, see, see what we need to know about mm -hmm. the schools and well, they've and make had, a, sure they've had okay. a lot of expense with the HVAC, um, you know, tents. There's been a lot going on. So that's why I'm not so. Um, I want to make sure our COVID money covers exactly. as much as possible because otherwise we're going to be paying out of it mm -hmm. for, you know, for our, our, own. Uh, our own taxes. Mm -hmm. So yep. that COVID money is for yeah, COVID expenses. COVID expenses. Mm -hmm. So I'm. Um, I hear you. Okay. Um, so the caveat to all of us is we still don't have a final budget from the state. They said in a meeting that we would have it in October. Yep. They did not say what part of October. <laughs> so honestly, I know. if we feel like we aren't prepared, we could push it back. The issue is, is where would we have it? Yeah. No, no, because no, we're going to be safe. Because stop, we're going to be safe. Well, we we'll can make be it. safe inside. It's just a question of how big is inside. Right. No, no, and we're not taking. You know, a this is the struggle that everybody's having. On the other hand, without the state actually formalizing a budget, we're still flying somewhat. Um, yes, but our numbers are okay as long fine. as they, as long as they level, keep level funding us. We're actually better because we were supposed to get a cut in school aid. So. In actuality, we're so we're so far we're actually getting more money than we were anticipated. So we're okay. All right. That doesn't mean okay. That we I just so want to make sure that that I say that out loud so that I people know. know that I haven't forgotten that. I know. But listen. That All right. Means, so I will talk to Brenda tomorrow. So that means when you have a chance when you run into Sean Cronin at the <laughs> Department of Revenue that you are going to still ask him about our zip codes. Yeah. Because as sooner or later, why am I asking? Uh, we'll, we'll hit, oh, because we'll of that school school aid. So the um, we have oh, the okay, you can explain policies. it offline. Yep. One of you, I don't know. Surplus. Well, okay. I want to make sure that that gets sorted out. I mean, that's been derailed too. But as long as we're getting no cuts to our fun educational money, that's okay. But sooner or later, it's coming. Um, surplus property. So, oh, surplus property policy. So Casey, can it's you just... not Kevin hasn't read it yet, so I would say okay, let's just let's put it off to the seventh. Okay. okay. Oh, actually, we could put it off till next week. Yep. Or next week. Yeah, put it off till next week. Okay. Um, Zoom management sustainability concerns. I I asked Casey to put this on. So, um, one of the reasons is because, like this week, every, I mean, Casey and Jen are here in the morning you know, around 8 o'clock, and then they're working until, it's you know. It's 8 o'clock at night. It's 12-hour days. 8 to 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Some of the times oh, it's no. 10 o'clock at That's night. That's what you pay me to do. You don't pay her to do that. Right. I know, but I. I at least not to me. We've, we've got to figure out what we're going to do because it's not so sustainable. So Jennifer had a really good idea. Okay. I had an idea. Okay. She said before or after the wine. Hi. <laughs> what? 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 Uh, <laughs> what do you got? So, so I had an idea. Actually, I was over talking to the chief, and he said, oh, we should um, get some interns. And all of a sudden, this light bulb Ooh. went off in my head. Ooh. And I said, how about Alex? So about I who? reached out to Alex. Alex? Her, Mr. Alex. Her, her Person Rudder. Oh, yeah. yeah, Alex. He was, yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's awesome. Yeah. So he had, had sent an email to Casey and I asking about, you know, getting credit, whether yeah. we had any work for him oh, at the time, he was great. you know, we take a, a lot to manage. And yeah. so I was like, you know, we, we couldn't think of anything. And then all of a sudden yesterday oh, when I was talking to the home team, run. I was like, oh, so I sent, I called him and, um, and so he's coming in tomorrow at 8.30 to talk 
with us Great. about um, Great. possibilities that maybe he can intern and get credit for helping some of these night meetings. Because, I mean, like this week we have eight night meetings. Yeah, like, that's a I mean, lot. It's just, so, here at night I have a meeting from 4.30 to 6.30, and then I have a seven, a concom meeting from 7 to whenever, you know, so. Uh, no, I agree. No, that's a great plan. Great plan. I'll hand, I'm going to handle concom. i got to be there anyway. That's I know, but you are also doing another one in between. Right. Well, it's so Whatever. important. <laughs> it's important to have somebody manage. I know because Jen, look what happened on. last night. You you were putting up, you know, the the share sharing the screens with the informational sheets and stuff, and um, I mean we got to have somebody. Right. No, I think that's a great plan, right. Jen. Thank you. Yep. It's we're all for it. To start. Yep. And, and I think. Jennifer working on that with Alex has been really helpful for the two of us to just sit there and breathe for a minute. Mm -hmm. So if everything works out with how we, how, how it could with Alex, because she's going to have to train him, yep. um, or he has to have access to the accounts and that yep. sort of thing, I think this could be a workable solution to take some yep. of the pressure off of Jennifer. Yep. Also, also, just also if, we, if, also, if we have to Sorry. pay, a, if we have to pay him a stipend or something, Yep. We, that's COVID expense. That Absolutely. That's a you know that's a small token COVID expense. Usually with an internship you have to give some kind of um, token. I mean they do the credit, but you give a, a He's token great. stipend. Well worth it. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I know. I know. Absolutely. He's fine. Yep. So great. That Love that is a really good idea, guys. Let's go for yep. it. So I'll be with you this morning at eight o'clock. Okay. tomorrow, but he'll, he's or 8.30. He's coming in at 8.30, so, you know, we can discuss. Okay. I mean, he won't do all of them, but no. it'll give us some relief. Yeah, yeah. You know, That'd be perfect. I know. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do with, a, with your evenings free. Come on, guys. <laughs> get a fire pit. I know. <laughs> I have a fire pit, and she has a fireplace. <laughs> but okay. this is all Jennifer, so thank Jennifer. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, That's a great perfect. idea. Thank you for mm -hmm. yeah, um, showing right some idea. initiative, Jennifer. Yeah, That's sure. really great. Good, good light bulb yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, I mean, inevitably, yeah. our priority is to get everything done and completed with the town, and to keep things rolling and moving. Right. And um, want to do that. By the way, I'm going to leave the updated um, uh, clinic volunteer schedule on your desk. Okay. Yes. Right. And you know, Casey, what did you say? What? What thing you say? Oh, improvise, adapt, and overcome. <laughs> there you go. That's my motto, baby. <laughs> okay. I like them. All right, we're moving on for mail. Thank my husband. He shared. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah, there's a couple pieces of mail here, um, and, and the administrator's report. I didn't see any mail. Right. So right now, oh, I. Right now, I'm really dealing with a lot of stuff that's come up during the day. I mean, like I said earlier, our CARES Act first report is due Friday, and it isn't even partially done, although we're getting some help because I, it, it has been the busiest week, not only with meetings, but with general questions to be answered. So we've had, we started on the class comp. Um, we sent out the request for questionnaires to be filled out, and I think we've received 16. And we'll forward those to the consultant. The consultant is then going to schedule interviews and reframe some of those job descriptions once she's finished the interviews and we've had a chance to sort of discuss that. Um, and then we'll, we'll have something more to talk about with you guys. Right now, this is the data gathering st uh, stage. So the other thing that we've been working on is the warrant. I've been working on the um, RFQ. So I don't. I didn't say this at the last meeting. I don't think. But Conservation Commission had requested a request. Had voted to ha to get three quotes to do a review of an RDA. So I had to find. I had to do some research because normally you don't do a quote quote. You do. And a quote requires a scope of work. So you have to tell people what it is you're looking for. Um, this, the way they voted it was much more formal. So I'm going to ConCom's meeting tomorrow to discuss it with them because I did finish it. 
but it required a lot of research because this is in my wheelhouse. I'm, I haven't done wetlands in six or seven years. So I reached out and I tried to get some help from some other sources. So I've been working on that for a while. And unfortunately, it takes time. We've had a lot of activity with, as Carolyn said, with inspections to the various businesses in town uh, because we get a lot of activity through complaints where people are very worried. Um, and there's quite a bit of, um, what am I trying to say, grant activity. So we're still working on some of the grants that are either in the final phases or need to get reimbursements completed. So these are the types of daily activities that impact bigger projects. And I said something to Jennifer today. I said, we need a big project board so we can show people when they come in and say, hey, I need you to do this for me. Um, I got it. How would you like me to fit this in this list? Because this list is pretty long. Um, and different things take different amounts of time. So basically, I wanted to make sure that we got the class comp study done, or at least started, so that we can have it ready as we start the budget season. I've been thinking about how the capital budget season needs to go, because there were quite a few complaints that it started too late. Yep. And I've discussed that with Brenda. Um, several people are going on vacation, so we're trying to figure that out. Can I jump in real quick Say on that? that? On, the, on sure. the, the thing, so I was talking to Brenda too about that, um, and I think, and so what I was looking on on the calendar uh, for for, um, for the budget was not so much like budget sheets and departments and stuff, but to get a because she said that it's way too early, and she ends up duplicating the work, and it stresses out it stretches out the stress on all departments so long when we start super early and we kind of rehash stuff without any real numbers. Um, it's a lot of work for Brenda and I, I want to kind of be cognizant of, of her sanity <laughs> this season. Um, but also what I was thinking, what, what I do, what I am interested in is getting a meeting together of capital and finance and, and us to talk about you know, what our plans are for the year and the capital projects we want to do and, you know, the bigger things like, like that, but not, not individual budgets and people's sheets and what they're, you know, I mean, maybe, uh, um, you know, peripherally talk about changes that may want to happen or not happen at any particular department, but, but mainly just like, what are the capital projects we're thinking about for the coming year and that kind of thing, so. Um, I, the earlier the better well, on think, that because we're always late to the game on that stuff, um, just how it works, but, um, but not, not the other stuff for a while, you know. That's all. Okay. So that's what I was trying to do was start with capital. Yeah, perfect. But perfect. if you don't want to do that, that's fine. We'll wait. No, but no, no, I do. Understand. I do. They mentioned it three times. What's that? When they were talking to all of us, they mentioned it. The Capital Improvement Planning Committee mentioned it three times <coughs> that they thought their process started late. No, that, and that's So what I was fine. trying to do yep. is say, okay, let's go back and revisit when that capital goes out and we expect it to come back. Right. Because if they don't have enough time to digest, it appears that they're not comfortable. Right. No, I'm we fine need them doing that early. I'm fine doing that earlier. I was talking like, you know, what department needs, you know, what, what the, like the, the highway department's budget sheet stuff can be much later in the season versus a capital projects. So I think we're on the same page. Sounds good. Okay. Great. Um, is there anything else? Um, no. Vinner? Is All right. Dinner on the table. <laughs> um, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Oh wait, we oh, haven't had and we haven't had public comment. Oh yes. Um, is Chris sorry. Harris on the line? He's, He's usually he pretty good is. about listening to us. I know. I don't and know I'm how he does. Have it. Bruce with us today too. Yeah, and it was good Anybody to have else? Bruce. Anybody um, else? Today? Rocky. Nobody's there. Oh, we don't even have Rocky. What? Oh my God. What? We're feeling. Not loved. <laughs> no, it's good to have Bruce here today, <laughs> now, for sure. Yes. No, no, I saw the same. Yeah. Bruce, usually Bruce is really yeah. good, and yeah. Chris is usually there, and it's Chris Great. Harris. And I know. also uh, Rocky Foley is yep. pretty good about watching. Yep. Okay. Well, Thank then you. I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right.
All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Neff.